can be seated. The Lord will make that melodious, and we'll just hang with you until it becomes that. Amen. It's better to shout without the melody than, than to not shout at all. But I figure Father's going to do something so beyond all that we could think or ask, should we be willing to cooperate with Him. Listen, if you weren't uh, with us on Friday night, you have some homework to do. Now, I'm giving you an assignment, and I expect you to do it. On Friday night, I, we gave a study in the book of Revelation, and, uh, and I want you to go, and I want you to review that, because there's things that you need to see and understand so that you can recognize how, how you can find a place of authority and defense against Satan's strategy. And I think that when we see the big picture and where it's going, we become fortif more fortified in our resolve to not participate in any way with the tricks that Satan is now doing to ultimately uh, fulfill those things that God is going to allow him to do. And we live in perilous times. I, you know, I was just on with, I was, uh, you know, I really pr appreciate if you wouldn't do that. Uh, we, I live on, I was just on the phone with Tim and, um, you know, I just said, Lord, we just in par I mean, I said, Tim, we just in perilous times. He was asking me a couple questions about different things. And of course, Tim, Evangelist Tim Hall sends his greetings and he loves this church and he's part of this church and he's, we're just blessed to have him. It's such a blessing to have him as a dear friend and as a, an older brother and even father in the things of the spirit. And, you know, we're living in perilous times, dear people. You're going to have to understand how to come into line with God and how to come into line with the things of the spirit. And that's what we're here to do. We're here to, we're here to teach you and train you how to function, flow in the Holy Ghost. And that's what God has given us to do. And you want to cooperate with what God has given to us to do. What God has given to us to do is bigger than a person. It's bigger than a, bigger than a personality. And there's only one way that you're ever going to begin to move with God. And that is that you're going to move in faith. You're going to believe his word above all the other crazy ideas that come into your head. And all the other crazy situations and circumstances that you have to confront. Everything needs to be subdued to the word of God. And I pray God, I praise God that he is subduing all things. And he, is, he, he will subdue all things under himself. And, and I pray that you will participate with that absolute subduing. So that the word of God rules and reigns over you. And you can find yourself continually drawing out of the realms of heaven everything that you have need of. And then if you were not in the church service here this morning, I want you to also, I, I, I command you now in Jesus' name, I command you to get into the YouTube and you listen. To, in fact, I would just, I would personally uh, be very happy if you would go ahead and memorize the entire YouTube and change your life. And you say, well, my, you know, that sounds like, you know, kind of you really, you really think you're special. No, 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 I don't think I'm special. I know I'm special. I was beautified with salvation. I was given his own glory. I was made a son after his own image and likeness. I'm a joint heir with Christ Jesus. I'm a co-inheritor, in other words. I'm the heir of God. Give me a break. I'm special. So are you. Anybody can come and join us. All you got to do is begin to believe what God has said. I believe the biggest thing, the biggest challenge people have is they don't understand uh, the gift of God. Jesus said, if you just understood the gift of God, all you would do is ask. And I want people to come to learn and understand how easy it is to just ask. It doesn't matter what situation you find yourself in. All you got to do is ask of the rock and say, give me water to drink. And he will give you living water and out of your belly will begin to flow rivers of living water. If you'll stop responding to your problems and your issues and the lies of Satan, because I'm telling you, things are going to get so bad that if it were possible, even the very, if, if the day weren't short and rather, you know, that the very elect would be saved, that should cause you to stand up and take notice of the, of the, of the, of the salvation of the Lord and the preservation that is only found in him. When Jesus said, should there be any faith, will there be any faith? on the earth when the Son of Man returns. That should cause you 
to sober up and say, wait a minute, I want to cooperate with the Lord. I am doing my very best right now to gather everybody up. And I look, I feel, and I can see spiritual distractions, okay? I don't, I don't mind when babies are having problems, but when I see any activity that is other than the activity of the Holy Spirit, I, you know, I really, I don't allow that God, you know, the common thing among uh, God's people is to cast out evil spirits and to deal with the powers of darkness that would try to impose things upon us. Gee, well, if you just begin to bless the Lord, oh, you soul, and not forget all of his benefits, you can find real quickly how easy it is to live in divine health. It's just a wonderful thing uh, when everybody else is sick. Of course, we don't want everybody else sick, but it's just a wonderful thing that you don't get sick. And, That's right. And, uh, and though it attacks your body, you know how to flow in the anointing to run the attack off. And when pain and, and other things would kind of try to come to try to impose themselves upon you, you know how to stand up in God. So you've got two assignments because I don't want you to be left out. God lays his word, a foundation of his word, and he builds off of that. Now, if everybody will respond to God's word and be a doer of the word and not a hearer only, and the doer of the word is activating faith in the areas of which God has, has spoken to us, it's just participating with the Lord, then ultimately you grow and you mature and you make increase um, of yourself as you increase in the increase of God. God makes increase with you. And so we, we want to talk, I'm going to talk to you some more tonight, really out of, um, Isaiah chapter 58, which I, I talked a little bit about this morning, but I just want to talk to you about your soul prosperity. I want to talk to you about spiritual prosperity. And I don't want you to be poor. I don't want you to be stuck in a caste system where, you know, you don't know how to move forward in God, where you're just always living under the same salary, so to speak. You got the same wage. You're just stuck. And we, we don't want that. Now... Father, I pray in Jesus' name that, Lord, you give me the ability to properly deal with everything that I'm seeing right now. Father, you give me the ability to properly execute your judgments, your righteousness, not to step over, overlook in any way those things that you want dealt with. Father, we know that your people are not going to move forward so long as they stay in the same mindset. So long as they stay under the same influences of oppressing evil spirits that they've given ear to unaware. So long as they live in the same reactions to situations. So Father, I pray in the name of Jesus, you will give me the ability to help your people here in this place tonight. Father, give me mercy for those who have been long time hearing and very little doing. <laughs> and Father, give them your mercy so that the, the hearing will quickly turn into the doing. In Jesus' name, amen. Father, we thank you for the ability to hear. In Jesus' name, I command you to have the ability to hear. Is there anyone deaf in, or have any kind of hearing problems that are physical? I speak to you right now in the name of Jesus, and I bring to you the richest supply of heaven so that you have a provision to be able to hear right now in the name of Jesus, that whatever ear problem you have, whatever problem you may have with, uh, with being deaf or ringing in your ears, the other night, the power and the glory, of, I, I had gotten hit by a, a, an amplifier and my ear had started ringing. And it, it, it's a pretty tough thing to have your ear ringing. And with the power of God was moving in such an incredible way. I think it was like two Sunday nights ago or something like that. I mean, last Sunday was just over the top for me, but I think it was, I believe it was two Sunday nights ago. And I got home and I laid down and I heard a wind, a wind, not a, hum, not a, not a hum. I heard a wind in my ear. Hallelujah. And then I noticed that there was absolutely no more hum. You know, see, you don't even have to ask. You just stand in the presence of God. And if you know how to just receive, see, if you just know Jesus said, if you knew that, if you understood the gift of God, you would make demand of me. See, Jesus made demand of the woman. He said, give me to drink. And he turns to her after her response to his request. And, she's, and, and, and then he says, if you understood the gift of God, you would ask me in the same, same way if I've asked you. 
And I pray to, today that you will begin to understand how to enter into a realm. It's a spiritual realm. It's very different than the earthly realm. It's very different than the realm of self-interest. It's very different. It's a very different feeling. It's not a make-believe joy. I've got to have joy. I've got to try to be happy. It's literally being able to receive something from heaven that is available to us on the level that we know because we have accepted what God says. I have the Holy Ghost here with me right now. He's with me and he's also in me. I know that because I acknowledge that because I believe that and I acknowledge that and I begin to thank God for it. It eclipses everything else that most people are just challenged with and can't get past. Somebody said, oh, you just don't know what kind of problems I have. I bet you that I have, if we were really to show it, lay it all out there, I have more challenges and problems that you have. And what's going to happen is if you'll learn how to deal with your problems and challenges now with the anointing that God has given you, he will give you an increase in the anointing so that you can have be able to deal with an increase in problems and challenges. Uh, you know, a dear friend of mine said to me, he said, man, the, heat, the battle is tough. The problems are intense. I said, oh, man, my goodness, what are you talking about? You're just right now in the process of being promoted to bigger problems. And you know it and I know it. So we just all laugh about it. You know, if you learn to trust God, you can, God, Father can lay more and more things on you. He can give you a $14 million property that you're inhabiting. And then I could go through the list. And if I started going through the list, you're going to go, oh, my. The bottom line of it is there's no reasoning in it. There's no human logic in it. There's no rationalizations in it. There's no imaginations in it. It's just simply total abandonment, trusting God and walking this thing out and doing what Father has to say. So I live like a little child in Father's house. I also live like a son who's activated with authority to go represent represent him. When it comes to the problems, I cast all my cares on him and I, look, I live like a little child. When it comes to doing his will, I, I move with the same kind of authority and the same kind of boldness that Jesus Christ expressed to us when he was showing us how to live out this life in God. Now, it takes both. I'm telling you, it is, it's not possible in the realms of men to understand how you can walk in great boldness and humility at the same time. Hallelujah. <laughs> it's not possible with men to understand how you can walk in great confidence and weakness at the same time. It's beautiful. Just come over here and grab chairs. You can grab them right out of there. You quickly just grab them and just take a, you should always have a stack back there, guys. You know what? One of the things that my wife and I were talking about is we need to help people understand how to how, have excellence in ministry how to have excellence in service. And one of the things that you'll do, you should have learned it in school, you take notes about what your responsibilities are to do. And I know that we've given responsibilities and assignments out to people, and we want you to be able to do what you do excellently so that God can promote you to be able to do more. Because what Father's going to do is he's going to give you an opportunity to learn how to do it excellently. And when you do it excellently, then you get to go ahead and move on to more. If you're faithful in a few things, Things, he's going to make you a ruler over many. So in the future, if you could just do this, it would cause less interruption in the meeting. We're getting ready to have a number of meetings going to start going down. Um, next Sunday morning, Brother Yun's going to be with us. And we're going to really need everybody who knows how to serve in the church and know how to give themselves to excellence to come participate with us. If you don't know how to do things excellently, then we'll train you. Because the Lord trained us to do things excellently. I feel I do my job excellently. I give everything I've got to it. I'm well prepared in Jesus' mighty name. I'm not leaving anybody dangling. Amen. Amen. And so I figured that I can also transfer these things that God has given me to do. And then we're getting ready for a three-day meeting that really takes everybody to be, in, to be activated. Activated fundamentally. And, you know, when you recognize how that we truly do living, live in perilous times. We have to try to understand, Father, how can we have more impact in this region? Satan, it seems, as such, has such a fortified stronghold because of what's going on in the, in, the, in the lives of men here in this region. But we know that the power of God is so far, so much greater than any power that Satan has that one man can subdue the armies of hell. One man, one person, full of the faith of the Lord Jesus Christ. 
God placed the glorious church in this region. This is the glorious church. This is part of the glorious church. And um, in this region, to effectively deal with mind-blinding spirits, the powers of darkness, the forces of religion. And now, I tell you right now, if you have any susceptibility to those, you have no power to participate. You're going out to the side to get consecrated in the realms of his love and grace to where Satan can't come play his tricks on you, can't come move your emotions with all of his circumstance and wind and lies and, and stuff. And then you're going to have authority for others, but we're having you join together with us in this righteous cause to learn how to take the stand on the high ground of the faith that we've been received from Jesus Christ. We want you to understand, as we said this morning, your faith must be in the power of God. Okay, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 5. Your faith is to be in the power of God, not your own human efforts, not your own human ability. And that's a giant transition from living after your imaginations, your logics, your rational reasoning, your understanding, to now stepping over and living solely and, and purely by the Word of God. So we're getting ready on the 17th, 18th, and 19th for... Uh, uh, a participation with Patrick Schatzlein and all the folks that he's bringing here. Now, I mean, well, this is a, if you think this is just a happenstance, just a coincidence, or just something, another meeting to go to, you haven't yet learned the ways of God. You don't understand the movings of God. You don't understand the opportunities of God. And we want you to be able to. Because when you do, then you're going to be able to respond to him with all of your heart and all of your life and now participate with him. And as you participate with him, you become a weapon of righteousness. You become a person now who begins to be faithful in another person's ministry. You begin to be faithful in the things of the kingdom of God. And then you share in the impact of a change in this region. And so... This seems like to me that sometimes people pray, oh, God, use me. I want to be used. What is it going to take uh, for us to see a change? What's going to take for us to see an impact? And then God's opportunity comes along, along and they're sleeping. They're in a deep, deep sleep. Most ministers that I know that are revivalists say this. Fact of it is, all ministers that I know that are revivalists say that the church in America is in a deep, deep sleep. I was in a deep, deep sleep last night, and I had a dream, and I wanted to wake up so that I could pray. And I couldn't wake up. I, I was so deep in sleep, I couldn't get my eyes open. I couldn't wake up. D the sleep had power over my will. Has that ever happened to you before? You could not wake up. It has been, only just happened to me a couple of, of times in my life. Finally, I was able to get up and I was able to begin to pray and begin to deal with the, with the situation that was concerning me at the time. The church is in a deep, deep sleep. They don't know how to wake up. They want to wake up, but they can't. They're trying to. But the state of sleep and slumber has authority over their will. And so what I'm doing is I'm pressing in in everything that I know in God. I, see, I, I know that I was born for such a time as this. Amen. I know that I was anointed of the Holy Ghost to do and participate with God in this earth right now. I don't know what you're doing. I know what I am doing. You can believe whatever you want. You can have all the doubt and all the uncertainty, but you know what? You're not going to get me into your mess. I'm over here hooked up with God Almighty who lives and dwells in the right spot. And we call and you come up here and join us because then you get your life hitched to count. Otherwise, what's going to happen is you're going to find yourself become more more fortified, more, more ultimately captivated by the stuff that's going on, you know, in a realm that has nothing to do with the Holy Ghost. I want you to be able to say this life that I now live in the flesh. I live by the faith of the Son of God. I, this, this life that I now live in the human existence. You know, Peter was really radical when he said Jesus suffered in the flesh. Arm yourself with the same mind. 
Where the that suffers in the flesh has ceased from sin. Hallelujah. I'm going to talk to you tonight about giving yourself over to walking in the Spirit. I'm going to talk to you tonight about obeying God in such a way and believing God in such a way that you can have an entrance ministered to you how to step over into a vision. You say, Father, I'm ready for a vision. No, I mean, I'm saying that you would say, I, Father, I'm ready for a vision when you get ready to go to bed. And I'm glad that everybody's responsive tonight. Praise God. Amen. You go ahead, just repeat. As far as I'm concerned, you go ahead and repeat everything I'm saying if it's going to help. Amen. It's Father, I'm ready for a vision. And because you're hooked up in that realm, you can have one. Because there's a lot of things that Father wants to show us that nobody's really able to receive. Somebody says, hey, I want more of Jesus. Well, that's really good because he wants more of you. So now you guys have a relationship that's in agreement. And if you want more with God, if you want to walk with God, you're going to have to agree with him. And everything that Father is saying is absolutely opposite of all the stuff that you're going to be interacting with in this earthly realm that is governed by a Luciferic cult. A Luciferic power. He is the God of this world. He's designed everything that is around you. Now, I'm going to say this. I want to take a break and say this. If you were here on Wednesday night, you saw me get radical. You guys saw me get intense. I want you to understand when I, why I get intense. Because when I f- sense things in the spiritual realm that is literally coming out to stop the anointing, I will not let the anointing be stopped. It, I deal with it the same way if I'm, sickness is being imposed upon me, same way if disease is being imposed upon me, same way if temptation is being imposed upon me. But I do it even more radically when it's something that is opposing the anointing of God. I'm going to keep the high ground. There is nothing going to stop me or shove me back into a corner and cause a decreased manifestation of the power and presence of God. I'm going to come out fighting like a mighty man of God. I'm going to come out rebuking with all authority. I'm going to come out laying charge of the thing. Yeah, my goodness. And there's all kinds of weird stuff going on here on Wednesday night. You know why? Because people don't know how to gird up the loins of their men, of their mind. People don't know how to stand against the wiles of Satan. They're constantly being affected by circumstance and situation. They're constantly having murmuring and complaint coming out of their mouth. They're constantly agree- agreeing with the lie. It's about time you rise up and begin to deal effectively with the imaginations that are set against you. It's about time that you rise up and begin to deal effectively with a self realm that Jesus Christ said you must deny daily. I pray in the name of Jesus that you'll get wisdom and insight to be able to understand exactly what that means. Amen. Amen. And that's what we're here to do. I'm here to help you. I'm here to help you. There are people that are around me that God has given me special instruction to mentor them. They did not ask me. God told me. That's a big difference. And I am going to tell you right now, for every one of you that are here tonight and that come, that are watching by web, God has given me a place to help you in a general way as you come into the church because he's made, He's given us the resource. I mean, my goodness. We're going to parade apostles and prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers all year long through this place. Oh my goodness. And the anointing is here. And that anointing is for you to be able to be made perfect. For you to be able, in other words, to mature fully. But you've got to lay hold of it. You've got to draw on it. You've got to want it more than anything else. It's got to be something that you place a demand on. You desperate for. Because it's free, but it isn't cheap. Right. Understanding the gift of God, you can be one messed up person, have five husbands and living with a man that's not your husband let be and the, you literally being the worst most immoral person of the day because there couldn't be anything worse than that and Jesus said if you understood the gift of God you just ask me and it'd be yours and when I came to understand that, I knew that it, all the time I could have a move of God in my life and I decided I wanted a move of God all the time. And, and I'm so blessed to see my children around me because I was watching Daniel the other day. We were in a kind of a tough situation. The atmosphere was changing because of a situation that was developing. And I immediately heard tongues kick in on him. Right, because it's just like the Holy Ghost makes sure that he is, you know, it's like a regulator, you know. All of a sudden, boom, it kicks in, supercharges you so that you're able, able to stay right there with the same level of the manifest presence of God. You don't get drug into something, you know. And we want God's people, 
We want God's people to learn how to live in this <laughs> glorious realm. It is a beautiful thing to walk it out with God. It is so wonderful to walk in the Spirit and live by the Spirit. I mean, it's all of this in heaven, too. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. It's truly days of heaven upon the earth when you have Jesus on one side, the Holy Ghost on the other. Jesus said, lo, I'm with you even unto the end of the world. I mean, I have Jesus. I believe that. I recognize him. I don't walk around in doubt and unbelief. I agree with God. I acknowledge what he's doing. I tell him. I give thanks to him for all that he has supplied. I'm telling you, if I feel like somehow that there's some kind of, of, of oppression coming upon me, messing with my joy, I just begin to thank the Lord for the rivers of living water that I have gushing out of my innermost being. It ain't about what I feel or what I think or what circumstances or lies are trying to impose upon me. I believe God. I believe what God said. I acknowledge God. I recognize God. And when I begin to talk about him, when I begin to talk about his word, when I begin to declare, begin to declare, declare his word, all, all that which his word ha has spoken begins to be manifested in my life on the level that I understand how to receive, and I want to be able to receive more. I want a greater capacity. Hallelujah. And so do you. And I got a greater capacity for you to get tonight. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Because we are not sufficient of these things. God is our sufficiency, and that's sufficient enough. That's right. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Can you turn this up a little bit so I can hear? And I won't spit so much in the mic. Watch out. If you start talking in this mic, you got to tell it yet. Uh, Isaiah chapter, uh, whew, whew. Hallelujah. hallelujah, praise God forevermore, goodness and mercy, <laughs> you know when you know you've got goodness and mercy following you, give me a break, you don't care what situation you find yourself in, you've got goodness and mercy, goodness is on God's provision, mercy is on that you have need to take care of whatever problem or failure or shame you've ever been in. He took all my failure, all my problem, all my shame, laid it upon the Lord Jesus Christ that I might walk in his unblemished favor. My goodness gracious, I'm not going to walk around my shame and my failure and my sin. Not when it's been laid upon Jesus. I'm going to live in the faith. Hallelujah. I'm going to agree with God. I'm going to receive all those things which he's given. And it's not something that you try to work up and have sometime in the future. It's something that God's salvation is today salvation. It's a now salvation. It is here. If any man would hear his voice. That's right. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. Praise the name of Jesus. Now, I have so many things to say in Isaiah chapter 58 that I don't even know where to begin. So I'm, we're just letting that be sort out, sorted out right now. But I, I, I think that I'm going to go ahead and start right around verse 14. I, I think is what I'm going to do. Even though I've got to leave a lot of things behind. Not too long ago, the Spirit of the Lord said to me, said a lot of people's pointing fingers. They're just pointing fingers. And there's fingers pointing going on all over the place. So I said... I, saw, I said, there are many, I wrote this on the Facebook, because this is what the Lord gave me, and it's just a prophetic form for me. It's a preaching form for me. So I'm not telling people what I eat and show them a picture of it. <laughs> it's nobody's business where I've been. Uh -huh. Thank you. Amen. Thank Come you. on. It's just a preaching form. That's all it is. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And somebody said, there's that bad stuff on it. You can block every bit of it. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. In Jesus' name, there's a little button that says, I don't want to see this. It's obscene. It's filthy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Say, give us a comment why you don't want to see it. Because it's ungodly and it grieves the Holy Ghost. Period. <laughs> you won't see it again. I guarantee you, I haven't seen anything like this yet. I just preach. Amen. Somebody's going to look at that. Grieve the Holy Ghost. My goodness. It's what dragging people into hell right now. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's a preaching for them. So I wrote, there are many people that are pointing fingers. Cut those fingers off so that you might enter into heaven. And it's not just heaven now, later, it's heaven now. There's people that just complaining and murmuring and they just uh, unthankful. If you just start giving thanks, your whole life will change. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ha, ha, hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. My, I was telling some people, I have this constantly happen to me. It's just God's provision for me. You know, I, I, you know, I, I took my truck in because a brand new truck. God gave me this truck. It was a miracle truck. God gave me this truck. It's just an amazing miracle. 
It was what he did. It wasn't something I'm just looking for a new shiny object to have. It was on the miracle provision. I needed it for the things that God has me doing. And then they had a problem and get over there and they say, well, there's diesel in your DEF and you avoided your warranty and you're going to have to pay for it. And it's about $3,000. And I'm like, you got to be kidding me. I mean, all I did was put DEF fluid in from the pump at the station. It was a bit of diesel. No, it's you messed up. You a dunderhead. I mean, goodness. So we voided the warranty. And all I did is I just said, I was like, that's my truck. This truck you gave me, Papa. And I don't, if, there's too many places we need to spend $3,000 right now. And then I just said, okay, I'm just going to rejoice. I'm going to rejoice. I'm going to give thanks. Thank you, Father. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your blessing upon my life. I thank you that I live in your divine favor. I thank you that I'm your son. You're my dad. I thank you for the provision that you've given me, that you keep everything that, you've, uh, that you have put in my stewardship. We just got happy, you know. I went home. I complained just a little bit to my wife. I just like a couple words. I can't believe it. They wouldn't, they said that our warranty was void. But I'm just going to be happy about it. And that's what I said. I'm just going ahead and rejoice. Praise God. Hallelujah. Then we called up the customer service and say, ah, yeah, you messed up. Forget about it. You know, anybody does that kind of, I, in all my years, I never heard anybody do that. And I'm thinking, well, it's only been out for a year. But nonetheless, she said it. <laughs> all my years. I okay. So, <laughs> the next morning, I get this call, Mr. Spitzberger. We just want you to know we're going to go ahead and do it for you this time. And you know why? My dad's taking care of me. Because I didn't go and curse myself. I didn't go ahead and rob myself of my blessing through my unbelief and doubt and being, uh, being overwhelmed by the circumstance and the situation and being disheartened and discouraged because I have enough wisdom to recognize that discouragements and lies and thievery and rip-offs and all that stealing stuff and all that lust stuff comes right out of hell. I'm nothing to do with it. I'm going to be encouraged. I'm going to be strong in the faith. And nobody can touch me unless the Father allows it. And if he allows it, I'll praise him. I'll give thanks unto him. And I just pray, oh God, lead me not into temptation, but to deliver me from evil. And you don't think he hears my voice and hearts under my cry and keeps me from temptation and keeps me from evil? Oh, yeah, he does. Hallelujah. And then the Lord said, go ahead. You're going to have tribulation in this world. Don't you worry about it. You go ahead and be good cheer because I've overcome the world. That's and if right. I go ahead and take a hold of God's divine provision for me, if I believe what he says, then I get to enjoy all the power and the authority and the blessings that are there within his promise. And I want you to have this. I want you to quit cursing yourself. I want you to quit robbing yourself. I want you to quit ripping yourself off by all your rationalization and all your reasoning where you just think, oh, well, you know, that makes sense. He said, I got cancer and I got cancer because I was uh, breathing the wrong fumes. Oh, well, that makes sense. And I make no sense. You need to quit making sense out of demonic lies. You need to quit agreeing with the mind of Satan that he is devised within the intellectual community in which you live. And nothing makes sense except for God's word. I'm not living out of the sense realm. I'm not living out of the logic or imagination or reasoning realm. I live by the word of God. Amen. Jesus gave me his body like bread. He means the bread of life so that I can live off him continually. Amen. It's, he's my substance. and He's my substance. He's my strength. I mean, I, my, my body doesn't good, do good fasting. I've never fasted more than three or four days in my life. I just don't do good. I, I can go ahead and fast three days, and i got to eat a day, and then I'll go ahead and fast two or three days again. And that's the way I live fasting. But I'm, I'm not one of these 40-dayers or 20-dayers or 10-dayers. I first start falling apart about the third day, okay? And so I, it's true. And uh, one day the Lord did tell me, he said, if you just keep going, I'll give you the strength to do it. And I didn't listen to him, and, you know. But I'm telling you, every time, it, it was a long time ago, it was. And the Lord's not done that to me since. And so I was immature then. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 Don't get me wrong. I mean, I, I, there was a time I believed unless your righteousness exceeds the light, righteousness of the Pharisees, you should know why come into the kingdom of God. And they fasted two days a week, so I said, I'll fast three days. Huh? So, you know, we, we, we stayed at this for a while. 
and then you get a little bit skinny and you, you know, and you start, and the Lord starts laying on your heart. I got more for you to do. You need to run harder. You need to run faster. Eat a little bit more. But the, the bottom line of it is when you go and you sit down and you eat that food, you eat that bread. My goodness. You're ready to run 40 miles. I mean, right. strength is just surging your being. Wow. You were just so weak. And everything tastes good, too. My wife and I had never eaten at Sonic, and we had been fasting for three days. And the Lord, and I, you know, I always said, okay, I, yeah, no, no, no. We were on the road, and we'd been fasting for three days. And I told the Lord, Lord, we're going to fast for three days. When I felt called to fast for three days. I figure you can get a resurrection after three days anyways. So, <laughs> hallelujah. <laughs> and so, uh, we went to Sonic, and it was the best food we ever eat in our life. It was the best food. I mean, it's like, it's like, wow, we didn't know that anybody made onion rings so well. This is amazing. And then, of course, we went back there the next day, and we're like, yeah, they got a different cook or something. <laughs> No, it was the exact same product. It's just that we were desperately hungry. And when you desperately hungry, even though even bitter things are sweet. <laughs> Praise God. And there was such, there was such strength that here the Lord has given us his, his body, his being, his life. It's like bread for me to eat. I'm living off Jesus, man. People running around and they let Satan constantly overwhelm them. You don't know him. You have an opportunity to know him. God gives you a lifetime to heaven to come to know him. Behold, he stands at the door of your heart and he knocks. If you open up your heart, he'll come and sup. he come fellowship. Ooh, rabakai. Once you go into heaven, you don't want to go back to hell. You don't want to go back into the jaws of torment and gnawing pain. You've been walking around in paradise, praise God. Now you're going to go back to hell. Nonsense. Nonsense. You've never been to heaven. You stood and looked. Oh, it's exciting to stand there at the threshold and look. You go, wow, praise God, I can feel that. Yeah, but you ain't stepped in yet. That's right. And Father wants you to come and step in. Amen. Father wants you to come into a place of repentance. He wants you to, it's the greatest change that exists to man. Repentance, where you get a new heart, you get a new spirit. Praise God. You get a change of desire and passion. Where your companion becomes Christ Jesus. And you, see, and you put him before you, you set him before in your right hand that you should not be moved. Amen. Amen. And I mean, you know, praise God, if we do sin, if we do fall short, if we do allow the enemy to trip us up in ignorance, we write, I mean, we're so full of God, is we seconds, we're going to be, we're going to be crying out to God, weeping and gnashing your teeth. Saying, oh God, I'm so sorry. you right back there, totally presenting yourself to God. Amen. Amen. And, and so tonight, I, I just want to get you on the right track. I want you to know His mercy endures forever. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life. I believe that. Therefore, I'm going to walk in mercy and goodness all the days of my life. I'm going to have Jesus. He'll I'm with you always, even in the world, end of the world. John chapter 14, Jesus said the Holy Ghost is with you and shall be in you. So he's with me. He's always with me. Praise the name of the Lord. He's not with somebody else. He's with me. Amen. Some, some folks believe God that they with. He's God's with to other people. You know, they got enough faith for God to be with other people. You know what I'm saying? Are you understanding what I'm saying? Yes. Yes. But do you have faith enough that the Father is with you? Hallelujah. How do you wake up in the morning and go... Good morning, Papa. Thank you, Father. Thank you, God, that you keep me this day. Father, all I want is you. I renounce everything of this world. I thank you that you keep me from all evil. He's a great keeping God. He'll keep you, hold you. Satan can't beat him one moment. Satan, no, it's not even, goodness gracious, devils, <laughs> demons, spirits, they're not in the same league. But yet they'll cry out. They'll cry out against you. You better make sure you know where you're going until you get fortified. You need to stay right in the big center of the mighty men because you weak, spineless, and unable, without strength. Get yourself over here. Let us protect you. So you're able to stand on your own two feet. Amen. Huh? People walk around all cocky and self-reliant. My goodness gracious. You, you want to get help. You with me? Yes. If Satan can take you out, you're not an overcomer. Huh? 
And I'm telling you, Jesus said, if you overcome like I overcame, then you shall come sit down with my, me in my throne, even as I sat down with Father in his throne. And so I encourage you to become an overcomer. I, I, I encourage you to get in the ranks of God's people. Amen. Amen. We'll take care of you. Just, huh? You know, the beautiful thing about God is he doesn't despise weakness. Men despise weakness. They're always looking for something weak. Huh? They're always trying to make themselves, they sniffing around, trying to be stronger. You know what I'm saying? That's man, that's human condition. God, you know, this, in the, it's like sharks. They smell blood and it's a frenzy feeding. Huh? It's true. It's true. Huh? It's true. God, when we were without strength, when we were weak, he didn't despise us in our weakness. When we were without strength, he commended his love towards us. Isn't it amazing? Christ died for the ungodly. Those are radical things. So that you and I could be made strong and become godly. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Did you open up your Bibles to Isaiah 58, verse 14? Are you ready for this? Are you ready for change? Do you know that change is going to be far more uh, than just a, uh, a experience of glory? It is going to be a position of authority that you're going to have to take, and you're going to say, this is what I do with my life now. We don't do these things. We do these other things. These things we have given no place to. They are not allowed in our life. I have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. I'm not hanging out with a bunch of people that, are, that aren't living right. I'm not going to do it. Huh? I hung out with a bunch of people that aren't living right <laughs> yesterday, but I came to them to deliver the word of the Lord to them. I came to... I, uh, you know, we, were, we, we uh, performed uh, Allie and Andy's wedding, two people that just came into the kingdom a little bit over a month ago. The Lord told me to meet with them. And when I first heard, I first heard, Damon calls me up and says, my brother's going to get married. I said, you know what, I don't do marriages. I don't do weddings. I said, uh, you know. And he said, no, no. He, says, he said, would you at least meet with them once? And I'm like, you're thinking, I don't meet with them. And the Spirit of the Lord said, you meet with them. I said, I'll, I'll meet with them. <laughs> you know, because we've got, I have ideas. You have ideas. Amen. And we better understand how to hear his voice. And you're never going to learn how to hear his voice until you start obeying his word. Amen. You start loving God's word. You start becoming a doer of God's word instead of just a hear only. And you're going to be able to hear more. If you don't hear the preacher preaching and you don't execute what God says when you're given wisdom from above out of an instrument that he gave authority to speak with, it's not a, something that I was born with. It's not a human ability that I have. It's not an earthly wisdom. It's something that Father gave me because he called me. He anointed me. You know, people want to be leaders. You can't be a leader until you're anointed a leader. Why did they make me a leader? Because you're not anointed to be a leader. Well, why can't I do more? Because you're not anointed to do more. Does that mean that you can't get more anointing? No. You have an unlimited supply, but you're going to have to understand who you are and sober up. Somebody said, how do I sober up when I have an unlimited, unmeasurable, dimension of divine grace available to me? Look at what you're doing with what you have right now. And that should show sober you up real quickly, eh? Eh? I should sober you up real quickly. And if you're not doing as much as what Father has purposed for you to do, and your heart's been stirred by the grace of God to do what it is he's called you to do, to do more, to step into his ministry, all you got to do is get desperate, hungry, and thirsty, and he'll fill you. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst after righteousness because they're going to go away empty. They're going to go away not having anything because the Lord doesn't like a couple of different folks. This is say none of that. He said, he fill you. It's just absolute. <laughs> Too many folks don't mature. What, let me tell you what's happened to you, okay? So when you begin to pray, you found an access. You found an entrance. That's a beautiful thing. Don't ever, don't ever let up on the entrance. That expression that's going on in you, okay, that is an entrance that you've discovered. An entrance was ministered to you. You hook up with the realm when you begin to do that. 
Now what happens, you keep doing it and the realm will get bigger and the expression will be get, more, be get, get, get more glorious, but you don't let up. Every single person needs to see a relationship develop in their life with the Lord to where they find an entrance. I have an entrance. You can watch me. You, can you see my entrance up there? I've got an entrance. I hit a realm. Now, I get to hit that realm every day. Why? Because I believe in the realm. I believe that, that uh, I have been anointed with the Holy Ghost. He's baptized me in the Holy Ghost in fire. These things are mine. Uh, I've got a river. I've got an unlimited expression of divine power and glory flowing out of my innermost being. All I need to do is drink. All I need to know how to do is drink. In other words, I've got to understand how to access the realm of my relationship. And once I do, I'm not going to let up. I know how to access the realm of my relationship in praise. I know how to access the realm of my relationship in prayer. I know how to access the realm of my relationship and by, in general, by thanksgiving. Because whether it's prayer or whether it's praise, I'm always giving thanks. I'm always recognizing God. I shut everything else out. I go to God. I shut everything else out. I won't even look at men. I won't even know what's going on in the realms of men. It is not irrelevant to me. I've shut everything out. I've shut circumstances out. I've shut every imposing force, everything that says this is the way it's got to be. They try to come and demand of me. You listen. This is, it's this way for all men and it's got to be this way for you too. No, it's not. Amen. Because Father didn't say so. I'm going with what Father says. Yeah. Amen. I'm hard-headed that way. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm gonna mang Jackie Kalopo. And it is an expression in every dimension of our life, and it needs to be. When sin comes along, when uh, circumstance and situation comes along that would draw us away, we have to be willing to say, I do not bend and I do not bow. I guarantee you I would have been a Joshua and a Caleb. It's proven it time and time again in my life. I guarantee you I have proof enough that I would have been like one of the three Hebrew children got thrown in the fiery furnace. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. I guarantee you that God is setting me up to do greater works through my life and that the things that happen in my life are just preparatory. God says, look at the door I'm going to open up to you. Look at all the things that you're going to be, I'm going to, be, I'm going to use you in to, to change the situation of nations. Yeah. And God wants to talk to you that way too. And that's why I'm here, because he's doing that. <laughs> Father hasn't left anybody out. He said, come on in. You can have the unlimited realm of my divine power. But there is great change of the way that we think and the way that we act and the resolve of doing those things that God has called us to do that must be fortified in our life. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm going to talk to you tonight about soul prosperity. Hallelujah. And I wish above all things that you prosper and being healthy even as your soul prospers. Soul, hallelujah, prosperity. Soul in the Hebrew language, nephesh, also in the, in the uh, Greek language, suke, speaks of the entire life, not some little dichotomized part of the human nature. It speaks of the life, the whole of your life. God wants the whole of your life, the whole of your being, your existence, who you are as an individual person. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do you know where you were when God laid the foundation of the earth? Think about that. Huh? The whole of that which God formed and called into existence. I mean, that's a powerful question that God asked Job, isn't it? And people go to thinking, don't worry, you're not going to figure it out. <clears throat> Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Somebody said, somebody said, well, it didn't exist at the time. Well, I believe we existed in God because we came forth from him. Hallelujah. I can't tell you the nature of that, the, the, the dimension of that. It's just amazing. I can't tell you. I can't, I can't begin to express it to you, but it's glorious. It's wonderful. We've all issued forth from him. Hallelujah. He spoke us into existence. Hallelujah. We were created for his divine purposes, for his glory, for his praise. And all oh, is a wonderful thing when you find out what you were created to be and what you're really meant to be and who you're really supposed to be. It's, it's wonderful. It's wonderful when you take upon the identity of Christ Jesus instead of the identity of devils. Yes, Satan imposes identity through sin, through slander through sedition, through evil speaking, through just suggesting 
a reproach against another person, just suggesting it's somebody else's fault. Watch out. Because the Lord hears. Probably hears. Nothing escapes his attention. Especially when you're crying out and saying, Father, use me. He's, he's looking going, huh? You probably use me and have my life. You can do anything you want to do with me. I can. And he listens. And he sees how you're going to respond to his word. He sees what you want. He earnestly looks. In other words, his, his eyelids try. He squints. He earnestly looks. His eyelids try, the sons of men. He earnestly looks. And if, and if he sees us there, Father, train me, strengthen me, help me, empower me. I want to walk perfectly. I want to walk uprightly. Holy Ghost, lead me in the paths of life. Oh, Lord, you know, when we, when we fail, when we fall short, we just we cry out immediately, Lord, forgive me. I know I did it wrong. We get real sensitive to the Holy Ghost conviction. Yeah. We get real sensitive to having done it wrong. Yeah. Hey, and we don't get all defensive about somebody correcting us. Man, this is the way of life in God. Are you listening to me? Amen. You get all defensive about somebody correcting you. You're part of the rebellious age. You're just rebellious. Look, there's a spirit of witchcraft. I mean, it's amazing to me how many people I encounter, and as soon as I encounter them, I hear in the spirit, witch, satanic, Luciferian cult. There's, a, there's such a powerful stronghold of witchcraft in this region. And we're just, I'm going to see the thing broken. That's right. But the Lord says, the Lord says rebe rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. It is, a, it is a spiritual incantation against the moving of God. Wow. Hallelujah. I had everybody today raise their hands and bow towards God that if they heard anybody speaking ill of someone else, they would rebuke them lest that they should carry their, that same sin. They should, be, they should be infected with that sin. It's worse than the bubonic plague. <clears throat> it's amazing how people make little children songs out of terrible things. Ring around the posies, pocket, ring, ring around the rosies, pocket, pocket full of posies, all fall down, all fall down. That's about the bubonic plague. Ring, a rose, a ring, and they put posies in their pocket because they thought if they just smelled the, the posies, they contaminated air. Wouldn't be, they wouldn't be the contaminated air, and that's what they thought was making them sick, but no, they fell down. And little kids running around singing songs of death. And we're just all happy to teach them. Give me a break. London bridges all fall down. I'm in all the other disasters. Give me a break. Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall. Goodness. I mean, all these little things. Goodness gracious. Pigs dwelling in houses and wolves blowing them down. Wolves and pigs. My Help us, Jesus, please. We need to get out of this mess. We have, we have been defiled with all kinds of ridiculous, negative, weird ideas. You know, if men through positive thinking can have great changes in their life, just through a human mental ascent by obeying just basic laws of, of as it were, of hum, human laws, of, of, of life, as it were, can be successful. How much more can we be successful if we begin to proclaim and live by and speak out the Word of God? Because that's far more than positive. Yeah. Hallelujah. That's life and authority. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey, Amen. Let me, before I start reading this, because I don't even know where to begin in Isaiah 58. My heart is so filled with Isaiah 58. My goodness. I'm like thinking... You know, if everybody would have been here this morning, I'd have a better foundation to, to uh, minister off of. And, but I'm going to get to Isaiah 58 here in just a minute. Hang on. <laughs> Genesis chapter 15, verse 1 is a radical declaration of how Father feels about it. Uh, us. I and... and whew, wow, this is right into Isaiah 58 too, man. I can feel it. Just feel it. This, is the, it. this is the heritage that God would feed us with. They, you see, this is what he wants us to, to eat off on a daily basis, this kind of blessing. And, and, and we've inherited, he inherited right out of this promise, right out of this relationship that Father is earnest about having with us. That is, I mean, it's like, I mean, it's almost like it's on a whole nother level and plane than what he had with Abraham. And he looks at Abraham and he says, Abraham, huh? He says, I am your shield. I am your suzerain. I'm your benefactor. 
Huh? And I am, I am your exceeding great reward. Whoa. It's, it's not like, you know, oh, Lord, Jesus, be my shield. Oh, God, please be my shield. Oh, God, please be my shield. Oh, would you please? Oh, God, be my exceeding great reward. He's saying, I am. I'm yours. Now, if you agree with him and if you'll accept it, because all this other stuff is just doubt and unbelief. Oh, God. It's just doubt and unbelief. That's praying doubt. It's a tapers of doubt. The Lord's not going to be impressed for that. He's not. He's impressed with us believing because you can't, you can't please him without faith. You're going to have to agree with his word. I've I got to be willing to say, Father, I thank you, God, that you have made yourself unto me my own pops. Father, I thank you that you are my shield, my benefactor, my suzerain, my provider, my protector. You are my perfecter. You are my everything. You provided me with everything that you have. I'm supplied with everything I need right out of your riches and glory. Now that is a little challenging to say when it looks devastating around you. Hallelujah. It is. But you can do it and things will change. They may not change at the moment instantaneously, but they will change. Because you keep doing it, you keep saying it, and year goes by year, and another year goes by, and another year goes by, and you keep seeing yourself increasing. You keep seeing a greater realm of authority. You keep seeing a, a greater realm of, 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 of availability of faith. You keep, you keep seeing a greater realm of divine provision, a greater realm of usefulness. And all of a sudden, you wake up one morning, and you find yourself overwhelmed with the blessings and the goodness of God. And, and it's like Daniel said to me, he's come to me one day, and he says, Dad... How did all this happen? This is amazing how all this happened. Yeah, it is. Isn't it? It's because we chose to believe him every day. It's because we chose to speak out faith every day. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. For those that come to God must believe that he exists. Hallelujah. That he's right here. He's right. He's a present God. He's not somewhere far, far away. He's right here. He's right with me right now, living on the inside of me, walking with me. My, isn't it a terrible thing to consider that here you are, got God. I mean, you're going to see one day. You had God walking around with you every day, and you were living like he didn't even care and wasn't anywhere around. Huh? It's, it's, God has given you these riches. If you under, begin to understand that we, can under, that we have this treasure in these earthen vessels, there is power. There is power, the very power of God, the excellency of his glory is within us. It is available to us. It has to be activated simply by us acknowledging a God and agreeing with them even in the moments of crisis because that's when it counts the most. That's when it counts the most. I will sing unto the Lord with joy in my heart. Oh, I will praise Him. I will praise Him. I will praise the name of the Lord. I will praise Him. I didn't have, we didn't gone on vacation for three years. We're out in the middle of Bakersfield, beyond Bakersfield, somewhere between Bakersfield and Fresno, and it was worse back in those days. There were less gas stations. And I was driving a station wagon that Youth with the Mission had given me. You, oh, forgive me, Youth Evangelism in Action had given me. They had made me an officer in the ministry and on the board. And we have a blowout. And we got two children three children crawling around on mom and mom wasn't feeling well in the back seat. What am I going to do? I can't believe this is happening. Oh God, where are you at? Where are your promises? Yes. No, you do that, you're going to blow everything. Start kicking it. You start, you know, hubcaps. Okay, I'm playing. You're going to go to nothing's going to happen. You're not going to get anywhere. Start, I can't believe it. I'm so sick of all of this. You are. You just, you just made sure you're going to inherit a whole lot more of it just by what you just did. Um, you're just going to have to be trained in God so that automatically the praise kicks in, automatically the thanksgiving gets, kicks in. Amen. Amen. See, how old was Elizabeth? 
Huh? She's like two. Huh? Come on, man. How long ago was that? Like 23 years? Father, my baby needs to get married. If anybody knows an amazing man of God, he can come and interview. 23 years ago. I got proof 23 years ago by a song that I sing to this today. Huh? Hallelujah. Praise God. I'm, I'm just... I, follow us. If, you're not, if we're not walking with Jesus, then don't follow us. But if we're walking with Jesus and we're getting results, follow us. Come cook, come hook up with us. Come act like us. Come do what we come jump around. Come dance. Come praise. That's right. huh? Come shout. Come give yeah. thanks. That's come on. Right. We've received things from the Lord Jesus Christ that we would like to deliver unto you. That's right. Now, if you want to just go and go go with what you got, well, my goodness. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense to me. Let's go with what God has for us. Let's watch it work. Yes. Let's watch it prosper in our life. Let's find out how to live in thanksgiving and praise. Let's find out how to live in the Live in rejoicing. Thank you, Father, for the anointing. Thank you, Father, for mighty provision. I thank you, Father, for a mighty provision. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. I feel faith tonight for that. I do. Isaiah. Fifty-eight. Isaiah fifty-eight. I feel the anointing. I feel the power of God. I feel that which calls in prosperity and blessing. Hallelujah. I feel that thanksgiving that gives birth to greater divine power and authority. I, I call it, I call it done. It's finished. I call it done. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I find myself saying, oh, bless the Lord, oh, my body. Oh, bless the Lord, oh, my soul. Oh, bless the Lord, oh, my thinking. Oh, bless the Lord, oh, my checkbook. Oh, bless the Lord, oh, my bank account. Oh, bless the Lord, oh, my engine in my car that has 357,000 miles and it's got to get up to 40 before the air conditioning start working. But when it gets to 40, that air conditioning is blasting and it's like, you know, what is, like, what is at 12 years old now and it's just I mean the hand that God is on it because it's a bless the Lord on oh, my car all my stuff everything that I have in my hand prospers everything that's in my hand prospers everything that is in my hand prospers amen and I say well I don't see it you ain't seeing right you don't see right I see through the word of God I, I, I see through the realms of faith, which calls it already done. It is substance. It's hupostasius, the place to stand for things that are not yet seen. Yes. That's right. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Mom, it's a confidence and an expectation. Yes. <laughs> yes. It, it, it's yes. for everything that I'm, it, it is, it's a hupostasis, a place that I can stand for those things that I'm confident about. And it is absolutely a tangible reality for those things that are not yet seen. That's right. And so that's what pleases God. Because I believe His Word. I just give thanks. and I, I know who He is. And the most important thing that I want from Him is Him anyways. The most, the, most, the most wonderful things that I could ever have from Him, He's already given to me at salvation. My name's written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Hallelujah. My name is inscribed upon the palms of His hand. That's why I feel so special. Amen. Is your name engraved on His hand? Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Isaiah 58. I want you to listen to this. Hallelujah. I, I'm going to start in verse, I'm going to go ahead and start in verse 13. There, are, uh, there is a list of blessings 
There is a list of divine empowerments. There is a list of divine authorities and divine abilities given in Isaiah chapter 58 if you're willing to participate with the love and grace and mercy and disposition of God. That's all it takes. Father says, I'm going to empower you. I want, you to, I want your faith to be in my power, not in your own human ability. I'm going to empower you. But nonetheless, you're still going to have to choose these things. If you choose them, here are all of the blessings. Here are the things that will begin to be developed and, and will, be, will mature in your life. If you're doing these other things, you're completely off the line of participating with the actual means by which these good graces of God are developed and matured. You say, oh, oh God, go ahead and develop them and mature them even though I'm not participating. It doesn't, it doesn't work that way. You're going to have to be willing to say, wait a minute, Father, I want to learn, I want to learn to walk in the paths of life for your name's sake. I want to learn to participate with you and do the things, oh God, that are essential for me to be able to properly represent you and function in the realms of your of your of your spirit, in the realms of your power and authority. What a great opportunity we have. It's unlimited. But what would happen is we sell out cheap all the time because we have a bad attitude. I'm giving a piece of my mind. It's the last piece you're going to have probably. <laughs> and if you can get that, you'll quit giving people a piece of your mind. And blowing it. Setting yourself back. Come on now. From now on. I mean, here's what the Lord trained me in. Because I'd have so many different things hit me on emails. Different people telling me how terrible I am of a preacher I am and all the other things. You know, they heard this and they heard that and it's all lies. Amen. Praise God. And it's persecuted falsely for his namesake. And there was a time in my life I just, I'd fire off at period. Sin. And then I'd do that and I'd immediately feel grieved. I'd feel grieved. I'd go, oh God, forgive me. Huh? And I said, Lord, train me, train me. And then I get another one of those emails and I, period, sin, grief. Ah, oh God, can I get this up front instead of on the back side? If I could have just felt like this before I sent it. <laughs> huh? And then I'll go through this with it, the Lord and then, you know, get another one, period, sin. And good, I mean, because some of us are slow. <laughs> But I mean, I'm, I kept tender. I didn't, I, I, I t I'm going to be tender. In other words, I, in other words I'm going to respond to it. I'm, oh, God. Oh, Lord Jesus, forgive me. Oh, Lord, I never do that again. And then the Lord started giving me the wisdom. He said, he didn't give me, he didn't give me the grief of the doing of wrong. He gave me the wisdom not to do it. He just simply said, stop and pray first. I wanted to feel a grief, ah, agony. No, I don't want to do it that way with you. I want you to, I want to give you wisdom. I want you to move in wisdom and knowledge and understanding. I want you to ask me how I feel about it. We know how you feel about it. <laughs> and man, when I get going with the word, I'm telling you right now, I got a gift. <laughs> and, and so I said, okay, Lord, I'm going to do that. And I would just stop and I'd pray. Boy, it was a, it was a discipline. I'm like holding off 10 minutes to give them the, 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 to deliver the word. Huh? <laughs> it's burning on the inside of me. I'm ready to respond to this. I'm ready to defend myself. And the Lord just started beginning to help me. You don't need to defend yourself. Let me be your defense. I'm so blessed that my, my children have that wisdom. I'm, you know, I, I'm sorry for calling you children, but, you know, <laughs> they, uh, you know, they adults. See, it's, it's, see, you can be adults and still be called children, right? And it's not a slam, is it? Okay, just that's what we are. Praise God, we're children. Even being mighty men and women of God. How many mighty men and women of God do we have in the place? Hallelujah. That's it now. Because that's what he ordained. That's what he established. I ain't going to be anything else. And nobody can take, me, take that from me. Nobody can take that from you. You just go ahead and start living it out. That's what he's prophesied over us. Huh? 
I'm so blessed to see my children who they got this established in their life. I just, man, it, it just watch the models. And where you don't defend yourself, you don't take up your own cause. You just cry out to the Lord. And it got to a place in my life. I just cry out to Father. I said, Father, now I want you to put within me how you feel about this. And it was so different. His word came forth in a totally different way. Huh? And there was many times the Lord said, don't respond at all. And then I, had, I get to quit dealing with the grief. I get to figure it dealing with it. I did it wrong again. Huh? And then the Lord allowed me then to have that much more wisdom and then that much more insight. So I'm not still living now that I'm 56 years old like I was living when I was 16. <laughs> Praise God. I'm going to tell you, it wasn't a good product at 16. 26, 26, I was radical, man. I'm telling you, I'm glad I'm not 26 anymore. I'm glad that I've matured in God. We want you to mature, but we have to cooperate with him. We have to be sensitive to him. He's giving us, he's leading us, he's guiding us. He's speaking to us. He's laying things in our heart. But some, some place we're going to have to be willing to change. Stop doing it. You've got to be willing to say, Lord, what did I do wrong? And you know what? He's not going to answer. He's not going to answer. Huh? Lord, what did I do wrong? And then what's going to happen is you're going to get, you're going to get hungry. Oh, God, what did I do wrong? God, I want to know what I do wrong. And then you pick up the Bible, and then he starts talking to you. Amen. Oh, that's what I did wrong. Because he's got a wonderful way, is when you pick up the Bible, you say, oh God, what did I do wrong? How did I change this? He's got a wonderful way, you pick up the Bible, and you go right to the spot. <laughs> like within just a, you know, right? right? Within just a few minutes, you're there. Yeah. Huh? Isn't that beautiful? Yeah. Yeah. Do you listen to him talk that way? You're going to hear him talk in dreams and visions. You're going to hear him speak to you strongly in your inner being. He's going to, that, that word of prophecy will come right out of your belly where you're praying and now God's speaking to you. It's beautiful, huh? Yeah. It's beautiful that the prophet actually speaks, the Spirit of the Lord actually speaks through our own lips to us. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah. It is amazing. The prophet's going with us and everywhere we are, we got a word from the Lord. Should we know how? And are willing to function, flow, in the Holy Ghost and keep his charge and do what it is that he says to do. Now, now in verse 11 says, and the Lord shall guide you continually. Now there's a list of things that you're going to have to be willing to do to have this. Because we want to just go right there. Oh, the Lord's going to guide me continually. Well, we know he is. We know he is because the spirit of truth has come to lead us and guide us in the all truth. But you know what? The Holy Spirit that's come to lead us and guide us in the all truth demands the same kind of obedience, the same kind of observance, the same kind of willingness to do it God's way that you would actually read in Isaiah 58. I don't have time to, to do it for you tonight, but I could actually do overlays of the things that God says in Isaiah 58 because it's absolutely New Testament terminology. And I'm going to prove that the strongest position that people would try to take of Isaiah 58 being Old Testament terminology, I'm proving to you tonight that it is indeed New Testament terminology. He said, I will, listen to it. He says, I, this is what the Lord said. I will guide, he said, the Lord said, I will guide you continually and I will satisfy your soul in drought. In other words, you're not going to have any kind of famine. Blessed is the man, Jeremiah chapter 17. Blessed is the man who puts the tr his trust in the Lord and makes the Lord the sole object of his trust. He's never going to have any drought. He's not going to have any famine because the Lord is going to continually satisfy him and bless him. He's going to be, a, you know, this, he, well, he's going to be a well-watered garden in terms of the terminology of Isaiah 58. That's not Jeremiah's terminology, but it's close to it. Cursed is the man who trusts in men, makes, makes men the, or the arm of flesh his trust. And you better watch out because... We allow that to go on more than what we realize. That's the place of discouragement. That's the place of walking in our own strength. That's the place of our own decision where we're going to make this thing. We're going to work this thing out. Well, we're going to change. Uh, uh, we're going to change our principle. We don't live by principle. We're just going to do it our own way because I'm. You know, I got this problem. I got this issue. God wants your faith to be in His power, not in what you have the, the ability to do. Uh, it's just important for us to grab a hold of these things in God. He said, he will make fat your bones 
and you should be like a watered garden and like a spring of water whose waters fail not. There is a divine provision, a continual flow through our life, a, continually sur a continuous surging of the Holy Ghost. How many of you love the expressions of the Holy Spirit? How many of you just love it? You love it when you're overwhelmed with the It's nothing that you create. It's nothing that you're getting jump-started. It's just gushing out of you. It just overwhelms you. You know what? I discovered that when that overwhelm isn't there, all you got to do is begin to sit down and read the Word of God until the Word of God strikes you and boom, it's going to I've also discovered in communion with the Lord of just giving thanks and recognizing all His promises and the things that He's said that He would do and the things that He says that He is uh, to us. That, all, that also activates this realm in, in, in glory because we're talking about a relationship that we have simply because we're willing to be with Him. We're willing to do those things which He's told us to do. And He says... And verse 12, he says, and, and those who do these things, they're going to build the old waste places. You will raise up the foundation of many generations. You should be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of the past to dwell in. Now listen, verse 13, if you turn away your foot, he says this, if, that, if you turn away your foot from the Sabbath, doing your pleasure on my holy day. He says, now what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to decide you cannot in any way pursue your own interest on my Sabbath. You cannot produce, you can't do your own will, your own way, the things that you uh, have decided are important to you. And, and, and Sabbath, and first of all, I want you to understand, the Sabbath was transferred from Saturday to Sunday. Because Sabbath is a perpetual thing with God. People just run around doing all kinds of things. This morning I got a call from Dish and, and they're telling me, well, they're coming out to the ranch, they're going to set this thing up for the internet. I go, my goodness, man, it's Sunday morning. What's wrong with you people? And though no one even understands. It wasn't long ago in this nation and everybody re reverenced and respected two important days, Saturday and, and Sunday, and that made the whole weekend. And that, it doesn't exist that way in other nations. It existed in this nation because we reverenced the things of the Spirit. That day has been transferred, absolutely transferred, from Saturday to the Lord's Day on Sunday because it's the first day of the week. It's the day that our Lord rose from the dead. It's that which he constituted as that which he set into position. But Sabbath is also speaks of God's rest. Because if you read in Genesis chapter 1, understand this is before law. On the seventh day, God rested. And on the seventh day, he commanded man to rest. Because it was the day that he had finished all of his works. We live in the Sabbath every day. Right now, we live in a realm of Sabbath. Because Jesus on the cross finished the work. He said, it is finished. And now we've entered into the rest. We're supposed to have entered into the rest. The Lord said, all you, Matthew chapter 11, verse 28, all you that labor in a heavy laden, he says, come into the rest. Hebrews chapter 4 says, to come on into the rest, lest a promise being left to you, any of you should come short of it. I mean, it's about time you and I start acknowledging all that God has done for us, who we are in Him, because there's a lot of people still waiting for another day. I'm going to tell you right now, that's not the faith, so that day will never come. It's time, to start, it's time to acknowledge the Lord. It's time to turn your foot away from doing your own pleasure, doing what it is you want to do, doing what it is convenient for you to do, and start doing what God said for you to do, both on the day. I remember the day that the Lord said, I don't want you messing around doing all this stuff on my day. I remember the day that the Lord told me. It was many years ago. I was in my 20s. And the Lord said, no more, you won't, I, I believe I was 23 years old. No more are you doing your own thing on my consecrated day. Uh, I got it right out of heaven. And I deliver to you those things which I got right out of heaven that I can prove to you in the scripture that are true. I'm not going to do my own pleasure. I'm not doing my own thing. I'm going to live a consecrated day because the Lord said that with that observance, there comes these blessings. There comes these increases. Huh? 
Now listen, I, I also got to recognize that within the framework of I no longer live my own life. I'm living his life. I'm not going to do my own pleasure anymore. I'm do the pleasure of the Father. I'm going to live for his will. And it's a beautiful word, pleasure. To do his pleasure. To enjoy the things that we have privilege to participate with in this relationship with the Lord Jesus. And so he says, he said, and if you'll call the Sabbath a delight, hallelujah, hallelujah, you'll call the rest, you'll call this finished work of divine grace, you'll call this wonderful time where we get together and as the church begin to participate with heaven in a unique way, with the congregation assembly set in heaven, people don't get it, they're still stuck in, in religious ideas, uh -huh. huh? And, and he says, if you call my day, my Sabbath day, you'll call it a delight. In other words, you'll call it a day to rejoice, a, a, day, to sell, a day to celebrate, a day, to, a day to have a party. Hallelujah. A day to have a, 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 a glorious Thanksgiving that's bigger than all the other days of Thanksgiving throughout the week. This is the big Thanksgiving day. Amen. That sets precedence for the rest of the week. How are we going to Thanksgiving all week, you know? Amen. Hallelujah. He says, the holy of the Lord, you're going to call the holy of the Lord honorable. That's me. I'm the holy of the Lord. You should call me honorable. Amen. Amen. I'm worthy of double honor. That's right. Come on, Bob. You, you, you've been reading the word. Huh? And do you like that? Or is that like, oh, I don't get it. I'm excited about it. Who do you think you are? Think you better than me? That competition of men is a competition of demons. Right. Instead of delighting in the word of the Lord, sniffing like a bunch of animals. Are you with me? <laughs> it's true. It's true. Now, come on now. You can't get any place to these things, and too many people are ruled by it. They're governed by it. And that's, why, that's why they're not ruled by the Holy Ghost, and that's why they're not governed by the Holy Ghost. Huh? I call you, I call you honorable because you're the holy of the Lord. God's made you holy. You may just sing. Amen. 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 And so I'm going to expect you to act holy. Amen. I'm going to expect you to act like saints. Amen. 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 I'm going to charge the church of the Lord God in Jesus' name to act holy, to be holy. God said, be holy, for I am holy. That's what he said. Amen. You're one with me, and I've set you up with me, and I've given you everything that I've got. I've got everything Father has. I mean, when you know you have everything that Father has, why do you ever have to worry about your finances ever again? Huh? Why do you want to moan the better tell you? But a security. Hallelujah. Broke a dia. Basic eating sheep lato. Hallelujah. Say mambra soto. Hakabasilea po. Hallelujah. Praise God. I feel a great prosperity. I feel a great prosperity. I'm talking to you about you so prospering. I feel a great prosperity. I went down on um, set on the couch this this afternoon and fell asleep and the Lord said I command you to prosper yeah. <laughs> yes sir yes sir I will obey <laughs> I command you to rise up and prosper I speak prosperity to you I feel great prosperity. I feel great wealth. I feel great wealth. It's there. The Lord just wants us to understand how to begin to move in in another dimension. A friend of mine came and ministered to us a number of years ago. It's been about three, four years ago now. And boy, he knows that realm. And he said to me, he said, I feel such an intense realm of prosperity here prosperity it is, it is a place ultimately through faithfulness and through well-doing and through thanksgiving and and through standing uh, fast in the things which the lord has spoken that you and i begin to benefit from we begin to understand how to cooperate with we begin to understand how to receive it's given but we don't know how to receive all the glory of heaven is given but we don't know how to receive we, we, we let doubt and circumstance get in the way we get so we let shame and sin and sorrow get in the way we don't know how to remove it out of the way we let, we let murmuring and complaining get it out uh, uh, you know hinder us we don't understand how to remove it from us because we've never really truly given ourselves 
ourselves to learning how to deny ourselves daily, to push that stuff out of the way, so you're not giving a place to that. I'm here to do the will of the Father. Whatever Papa said for me, that's what I'm going to do. And I've got a whole word. I've got a whole Bible filled with words like God commanding me to be blessed, <laughs> commanding me to be wealthy and rich and, and full of faith and divine power and authority to speak it into existence. That's right. That's right. Huh? Right. See, if you can't, if you're not, listen to me. You listen to me, every one of you. If you're not stirred by this, you're not ready to move in it yet. As soon as you begin to stir, as soon as it begins to stir in you, you've already now, you've come to a place where now you can move in it. You can begin to move in it. If you're not being stirred by it, if it's like, well, what are you talking about now? I know this, whatever. No, you need to get hungry for it so it can begin to stir in you because it's stirring in, it's stir, stirring in me. See, God stirs the waters of my life so I can jump in and get all of his miracles. I can stir the waters of your life so that you can jump in and get all the miracles that Papa has has determined for you. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. He says, and not and, and do and, and he says, not doing your own ways, not finding your own pleasure, or speaking your own words. And what a what a wonderful place to live in. When you just take that from the framework of now that we've been made heirs and joint heirs with Christ Jesus, we've been made sons and daughters, we've been filled with the Spirit, it's time now that we begin to declare Father's Word. We understand that, man, I'm not going to live by bread alone. I'm not going to prosper. My interest isn't in just making finances so that I have food to eat because there is another realm of a more important supply that causes me to have a greater provision and understand a greater provision and benefit from that provision. Man doesn't live by bread alone, but by every word which proceeds out of the mouth of God. And it's not going to come out of your mouth because he's put his word in your mouth and in your heart. So you're going to have to keep your heart with all diligence because there's a lot of situations and circumstances and ideas and imaginations and, and things that you've given, your, given place to all of your life that you've never been willing to shut down. This robbing you. Huh? This keeping you from living by the word. Testifying God the word, speaking the word. Don't let this word of the covenant depart out of your mouth so that you can prosper, so that you can be blessed, so that you can have great success. Amen. Amen. You know, the word prosperity in the Hebrew language means to cut through that which is in between you and where you're going. It's to cut through that which stands in front of you, to cut through it, to... to, to and it, it, it's not just a pushing through. It's not a breaking it down. You've got to cut through the thing. It's to succeed against those forces that would try to stop you. That's what this word literally means. To succeed when everything around you is opposing the interests that, that you have. And, of course, everybody can can relate to that on natural terms because, I mean, just try to go ahead and make a million dollars tomorrow. Uh, you don't even know where to begin. What's the first thing that's going to happen? You're going to start thinking of what's sensible. Ah, gotcha. You're going to start thinking of what's rational. You're going to start thinking of a plan. No, that's not the way it works. Suddenly, you can begin to call those things in. Suddenly, you say, make a million dollars tomorrow. Okay, let's go ahead and, and, and take a hold of faith and call it in in the name of Jesus. I command that million dollars to come into That's the right. kingdom That's right. for the purposes of the kingdom. Amen. Huh? Now, it's another realm for you to call it in so that you can build yourself another bigger house. I don't know about that one. Because we're talking about a moving in a faith realm for the purposes of the kingdom of God, for the will of the Father. Now, a lot of that is going to begin to be trained in the way that you give, the way that you begin to participate with the Lord Jesus when he says, take no thought for what you're going to eat. He says, listen, he says, where your treasure is, that where your heart, that's where your heart's going to be also. He said, don't lay up treasure for yourself on the earth. Don't make your life about yourself. He said, and he's making it very, very clear what he's talking about. He's talking about what you're doing with your finances. And so he hits it. He said, your body is more than, than raiment. Your life is more than meat. Don't take any thought for what you're going to eat or what you're going to wear. 
And, that, and, and you think about all the thought that we take for our mortgage and for all the things that we're going to do for ourselves because, you know, we've got all these bills that God told us to create. Yeah? You know, God told us to get so far into debt we don't have a time to, you know what I'm saying? Your debt ought to be only about the kingdom of God. Your debt should be only about the kingdom of God. You should have taken out all of those loans for the sole purpose of advancing the kingdom of God. Because that's what the Isaiah 58 said. He says, you're going to literally have to extend and pour out your soul to feed the hungry. Huh? you got to be willing to become, as it were, a supply to the orphan and to the needy. That's all you live for. Father said, then, 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 Father says, I'm going to put my blessing on you. I'm going to make you a means by which a, a, my supply to the needy is being met. And not only, just in, not only in the way of finances, I'm talking about in the way of the spiritual riches as well. But when you got them in one place, you're going to have them in the other. One day, I was with a man of God, and, and you know, and he started, he started telling me something, and I knew he wasn't just telling me something for the sake of, of, of myself and, and the people that were around me, a story that he wanted to tell. He was, God, the Holy Ghost was speaking to me, and he said, he said, it's like, he said, imagine this, it's like two airplanes. He said, here's the anointing, and it's zoring. The anointing begins to zore. And as soon as the anointing begins to zoar into the heights in God, the answer for you, what comes in is another plane right in behind it, another realm of provision right in behind it, and it's the natural provision. And as the anointing increase, so does all the provision for you to be able now to have the capacity to accomplish those things that the power and the authority of God is giving you the ability to do now. See, I'm in preparation to go and repeat what happened in Nepal over and over and over again. I'm stepping into a place of divine, uh, of divine economics. I was just on the phone with Tim, Vester, uh, Evangelist Tim Hall. We were talking about a divine economics. There's an economics of God. And if we can come to understand the economics of God, because we're saturated with the economics of men, and it is 100% different than the economics of God. It works in a different realm, in a different way. And you want to come to learn. It. You want to come to participate with it. And somebody said, okay, I'm ready. Oh, I'm, come on. I got my notepad out and my pen. I'm ready to teach me. Okay, give in the offering. Because that's the Lord that says the Lord that's how the Lord transfers it. That's how you get it. Now give more. Now give more. Now give with abandonment. Now give it where it costs give where it costs you. Now give it where now you're now it, it is going to impact your daily living, your food that you're going to eat. Hmm? My wife and I habitually give in a realm where it impacts what we're going to eat. We habitually do that. And we've never gone hungry. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. And well, we've been eating venison stew now for about two weeks, but I'm telling you, what a great provision. Hey, what? It's tough to be eating venison stew, isn't it? No, it's not. It's delicious. Amen. It would be a choice. The provision of God is great because what we're doing is we're pressing into another realm. We're pressing into a realm that man cannot enter. We're pressing into a realm that you have to cut through, which Satan has fortified because he believes it's all his. The wealth is all his, but Father has hidden treasures. Hallelujah. Father has hidden treasures. He will unveil, make known hidden treasures in these last days. God, I don't need a word chest. Father has one. Amen. Huh? All I need to do is go ahead and step into this prosperity, this spiritual prosperity that is available to me if I'm willing to cooperate with God and do it His way. But what's going to happen is we're going to have to let go of our trust. You know, we're going to have to let go of our confidence. We're going to have to let go of managing our own lives and doing our own pleasure and doing it according to our own direction and speaking our own words. It's a different realm. You don't know until you begin to get serious with God how much of your own words you're speaking. 
how much of your own th thoughts you're thinking, how much of your own ideas that are imposed upon you, literally by a world that Satan designed. It's not just rational thinking men doing that which is logical within the framework of, 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 of nature or Newtonian physics. It is a realm in which Satan is designed, imposing itself upon your mind and your thinking and your actions and your behavior. And if people can begin to realize that, that they're actually participating with the Luciferian cult. They're actually, they're actually participating with that which the prince of the power of the air designed, the God of this world. Suddenly you're going to say, wait, stop. I'm not doing that no more. I'm ready to participate with what God designed. I'm ready to participate with what he describes in Matthew chapter 6 and what he describes in Luke chapter 12. I'm willing to participate with this realm because he's God is not a liar. He's telling me to do something that is very uncomfortable for me to do. He's telling for something for me to do something that is going to demand I deny myself that I push my own ideas and my own interests and my own words and my own thinking and my own pleasure and my own delight aside and my, uh, my own rational uh, concept of the way the world works to say no to it. That's, that's hard. You don't have to have something supernatural to do that. And God's, gonna get, God's giving you something supernatural called the Holy Ghost. He's giving you treasure on the inside that the excellency of the glory may be of God. Hallelujah. There needs to be a flowing out of us, released from us, released from our life, something that looks like the excellency of God's glory. Huh? God wants, you, God wants your faith to be effectual by the acknowledgement of every good thing that is within you, by the acknowledgement of God's word, by the acknowledgement of God's promise, and by the acknowledgement of his rivers flowing out of you. I mean, I'm just telling you right now, people, I don't care how weak, how tired, how bad, how overwhelmed, how overcome you feel, if all of a sudden you lift your hands and you with a whole heart of gratitude begin to say, Father, I thank you that you've given me a river, that there is an unlimited supply of your divine glory and expression that flows out of me. That is the acknowledgement of every good thing that is in you. You begin to say, Holy Spirit, it is amazing to me that you are actually on the inside of me right now, that I am the very temple of the living God. It is amazing to me, Father, that you walk in me, that you live in me. It is amazing to me, Lord Jesus, that you are in me. You are my confidence of this divine glory. Amen. Everything changes. You live by the word of God. It's literally eating as it were. He's a bread of life and it's meat indeed. And you're actually living by his life when you begin to speak these things. Yes. People are silenced. They've got a gag order by demon spirits and they don't know how to shout and they don't know how to speak it out. And what they end up doing is they walk around in silence. They abdicate of what the, the power and the authority that God has given. And all they end up doing is thinking out loud or, instead of thinking silently how they're going to manage their situation and they lose out on all divine provision. It's time to stop that now. We need some help around here. Amen. Amen. You need to prosper. You need to find your entrance in. God wants you to prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. Yes. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. <laughs> and somebody talked talk to me about, well, how long do you expect you're going to live? Well, I'm going to live as long as Father wants me to. Amen. 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 I'm not going to put any limitations on it. I think it would be a great sign and wonder if I should live to uh, be 200 years old and start, and start now getting, looking younger instead of older. Hey, I'll sit by or die. Hi, I'm a, that common cicatatea. It's time for great signs and wonders. It's time for people to receive their dead to life again. It's time for people whose bones have turned into dust to be raised up for the dead again. Come on, man, think about that. Huh? I'm telling you, I'm living for a day when I'll be translated into places like Saudi Arabia, Me Mecca, Saudi Arabia. I know people got to go because they've got different things going on, man, but this is all i got going on. This is all I want. I'm going to speak the word. I'm going to describe these things. I'm going to rehearse them. I'm going to practice them. I'm going to declare them. I'm going to talk about them until they become a living reality in every dimension of my life. I'm not giving up. I'm not letting up. I'm not shutting up. Uh -uh, no way. I mean, just be translated into Saudi, into Mecca, on Ramadan, in the midst of Saudi Arabia. And, and then when they all kind of, you know, start talking about Jesus and how they need to come uh, to the knowledge of salvation, when they rush on me to destroy me, boom, disappear out of their midst. Amen, like Jesus did. Hallelujah. Give about 10, 15 minutes to regroup, then reappear. Or maybe 30 minutes or an hour. Or maybe even the next day. I guarantee you they ain't going to touch me then. 
they can all bow down. I'm looking for great signs and wonders and miracles. I'm in the midst of great signs and wonders and miracles. These are the days to be translated. These are the days to be disappear out of their sight where they can't lay hold on you. How many times did they try to take Jesus and kill him? And he disappeared. Disappeared. Huh? Scripture says he passed through their hands. That means they, he disappeared. <laughs> I mean, when you got a bunch of Jews ready to kill you, I'm telling you, they lay hold on, hold on you. You don't just pass through their hands without disappearing. I'm telling you, this the karabosea. I'm called to do the works of Jesus, and so are you, in greater works. Well, then that means I've got to be learn how to participate with him in very practical ways. I have to learn how to participate with them within the realm of those things that I can do right now. That is simple acts of obedience within the framework of what I can respond to in God. And if I'm not willing to do it, it's just a lie if I think that I'm going to do it. I'm playing games. I'm playing games. I haven't fully decided to go with God. I'm living in the fantastical instead of the practical. You listen to me. Don't live in the fantastical. Live in the practical. Because all of a sudden, obeying God's word is going to take you into a place where he's going to, you're going to ride upon your high places. I'm about ready to get to that right now. Here we go. Amen? He says, then shall you delight yourself in the Lord. Hallelujah. See, I see people all sorrowful and sad. We got to go, my goodness, why are you guys so sorrowful and sad? Can't you rejoice? What's wrong with you people? Why is it that you oppressed? You can't smile. Why is it that can't you can't be happy and rejoice in God? We're always doing that, right? I mean, we're up on the platform many times going, could people look any sadder? <laughs> eh? We go, we go home and we pray, oh God, help them to see that it's not that bad. <laughs> Huh? Well, they can't delight in the Lord because they, have, they live in their own life. They're doing it their own way. They're pointing the finger still. Because remember, you can't have any of this if you still point the finger. You can't have any of this if you poke out your lip, your bottom lip. If you have a bad attitude, in other words, towards people. Huh? Huh? Oh. If you're still oppressing people with your actions and with your words and with your mannerism, you still murmur and complain, you still a part of strife and envy and division, can have none of this. And really, when you look at what Peter said in terms of making your calling and election sure, he's primarily giving us the virtues and the defenses of the Holy Ghost to keep us from having those things going on in our life that would rob us of being able to participate with God. So there is no entrance. You just live religiously. You live afflicted and tossed and tormented. And every once in a while, Satan chooses to give you 30 or 45 seconds of joy. Or there's a miracle round that begins to happen and somebody knows how to preach the word of God, speak the word of God over you, over you until you start thinking different. And then you have, you know, 30 minutes to two hours worth of joy and then you leave and you get back under the a yoke of the situation and the circumstance. Hey? Huh? Well, we're going to do, we're going to do away with that here tonight. I mean, you have relax in paradise. I would say relax, you are in paradise. Right. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> it's not something I'm going to have someday. It's something I've received right now. If you understood the gift of God, you'd just say, ask it and it'd be yours. That's it. Huh? That's it. It's yours. And all power and all ability to live in it is yours. It's mine. It's mine. I mean, my God, your life. It's yours. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. Then you shall delight yourself in the Lord. That's why I delight myself in the Lord. Because I'm living like this. Amen. I just want more testimonies and witnesses around me. that You're living like this too. Amen. If you go where you're studying the Word of God, you'll discover how God got provoked when people had anything less than an expression of ecstatic joy on Sabbath. I'm telling you. Uh, you talk about a preacher that would not tolerate sad countenance in the meeting. God. God. And then somebody said, oh, he just expects us to be happy. And oh, you know, uh, these people who believe that when you get into a realm, you're going to be joyful. And if you're not joyful, then you're not in their realm. You're a liar. you a liar. You're under, you're under the influence of a deceiving spirit of darkness because your rebellion gave entrance to a demon power that possesses you. And now you propagate your life and everybody who has an offense and a hurt, they agree with it. Oh, yeah, that's true. 
Yeah, he is mean to us. God's mean. Expecting us to have things we can't have because we sad. And if he was down here with us right now, he only had to be here for three years in ministry. He only had to be here for 33 years, and I've been here now 56, and I've had to go through. That's nonsense. It goes on. It goes on. It happens. Probably goes on some of you. Something similar to that probably goes on in some of your lives right here, right now. You got an excuse. You got an excuse for living in hell when God's has brought you up into a, hallelujah, a heavenly place. Hallelujah. Be seated with him in heaven. Amen. Amen. See, the reality of it is, re reality of it is, even Jesuit priests, listen, I'm kidding you, even, even Presbyterians and Episcopalians believe that if you can say that you're raised together with him, that you must also be able to say that you seat in, are seated in authority with him also. Well, what if everybody started believing that in this place right here? We'd turn the city upside down. If everybody in this place would start believing that as real as you've been raised up together with him, you've also been seated in the same seat of authority with him, and you begin to measure the seat of authority above all principality and power of might, Satan won't kick you around anymore. You won't let him kick you around anymore. You begin to get yourself a contrast. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going after a round for you tonight. I'm ministering for a result. I'm ministering tonight so that you would be able to be touched by the spirit of prosperity, soul prosperity. Amen. That you'll be touched by a realm of faith that gives you confidence that you command that blessing to come and it's going to come from unforeseen ways. Yeah. That you can with total abandonment give all of your life to God, not just a portion of it, every dimension of it, it belongs to Him. You can put it all that you are in the safety deposit box of heaven. Hallelujah. Where moth cannot corrupt, nor rust can corrupt, nor thieves break through and steal. Hallelujah. Masakir Puranaya. Now you begin, as you do that, now you begin to inherit the things that God has for us in another whole nother realm. Uh, he that dwells in a high and lofty place, he dwells there with those folks who are broken and contrite, those folks who are willing to bow to his word, who do, do his will instead of their own will. Come and learn to me. Lowliness and meekness means I don't do my will anymore. I do your will, Father. All of a sudden, they begin to eat the heritage of Jacob. They begin to inherit those good things from on high. The provision of supernatural faith, a miraculous provision, begins to be effective in their lives. Right. Amen. Amen. It happens in a very different way than anything that you are accustomed to with working and measuring and quantitating with your calculator. You exist in it. I exist in the blessing of God. I'm not trying to get in it. I exist in it. I'm not trying to have something. I exist in it. I exist by salvation in it. I exist by oneness with God in it. I exist in it. It's not in the future. It's in the present. I exist in it because I'm seated together with him in a heavenly place. I exist in it because I'm the heir of God. I exist in it because God is in me and he, he, it's all the wealth is his. I exist in it. It's being, I moved in. It's there. Hallelujah. I don't get to utilize it according to my own will. It is by the design and the will of the Father. It is that which the Holy Spirit produces according to His will. But I exist in it. I exist in the realm of all provision. I exist in the realm of all power, all might, all ability for everything that I have need of. And the Lord begins to tell me, if I do these things, if I take no thought for what I wear, I take no thought for what I'm going to eat. I take no thought for my mortgage. I take no thought for all of my toys that I bought. Huh? Then he says, he says, and instead you seek first the kingdom of God. Then I did, then what he says is, I provide all these things for you because at that moment in time, you begin to understand how to live in that realm and exist in that realm. And because you live in that realm and exist in that realm, you're able to receive from a means by which that you did not labor for it. Houses that you did not build. Eat of things that you did not plant. 
it's good to read Psalms, uh, Psalms 118. I mean, everybody gets excited about verse 25, send prosperity, oh God, send prosperity now. But there is a whole lot more to learn in Psalms 118 before you get to verse 25 to understand how that prosperity is going to be activated and flow. How you can live in a divine expectation that ultimately is going to result in the provision. He says to us, he says, I will cause you to ride upon the high places of the earth. That is a place now it, of, over, uh, of total conquest and victory over all of your enemies. Over everything that could possibly ever defeat you. I'm going to cause you to ex ride upon the high places. In other words, I'm also going to cause you to exist in a realm of a, a heavenly realm, the highest place of all, which is the holies of holies. Habakkuk said, I will go upon my high place to see what the Lord says to me. That's where Papa begins to speak. That's where we interact with him. He says, I'll cause you to ride upon the high place of the earth, and I will feed you with the heritage of Jacob. Thy father, for the mouth of the Lord, the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. And when you begin to think about the heritage of Jacob, that is being above all other nations. That is being the head and not the tail. That is lending to many nations and not borrowing. It's a transition. Uh, and, you know, uh, th there was a thing in my life. I mean, I just, I, 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 you know, I, I'm, I'm on discovery, okay? And I'm just saying, Lord, what do I got to do to get into this? I'll do whatever I've got to do to get into this. And there's many things that I've attempted to do just out of a zeal and not out of an understanding of exactly how to do it. But Father has honored it nonetheless. You know, and I made a decision. I am going to lay hold of how to lend to many nations and not to borrow. Well, if I'm going to do that, then I've got to quit borrowing. Right? At some point, then, the borrowing has got to stop. I can understand, I can understand how Jacob borrowed because he borrowed for 14 years and was a, a bondman because he borrowed. But there's ultimately a place where he comes out with great substance and now he begins to be step, step into inheritance, an inheritance that God has given. Well, where do you make the transition? How do you begin to move in a realm of faith? Because I'm going to tell you right now, for me, as far as what I've done, I've borrowed for the things of the kingdom of God. I know preachers, well, the only reason they take out money on their house is to do the next meeting. The only reason they put... Money on the credit card is to pay for the next event. Come on, man. Huh? Yeah. You don't think Father's going to take care of that? He does take care of it because they're not going to be stopped. I, I, what was it Tim said? If, you, if, you, if the Lord doesn't open up a door for you, if the door, no, if a door's not open for you, make one and open it yourself. <laughs> make one. If the door doesn't open, make one. Right. And open it yourself. <laughs> That's going and doing a crusade somewhere. Getting up off your, you know, blessed assurance and running with the program because you know God's called you to do it. Amen. 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 It's being valiant for the Lord. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. I just want, I think that I just want to give you this one last, verse, one last verse of Scripture because I just, well, there's a bunch of verses of Scripture I want to give you. Like Psalms 1-3 is a great verse of Scripture. I'm just trying to find a way to, to pare it down for you so you don't lose uh, uh, the, the, the focus of what the Holy Spirit is saying. So you can grab hold of a realm and begin to believe about a realm the, of soul prosperity. You can begin to believe about a realm of where Father wants you to begin to ride upon the high places in the realms of the anointing. And what's going to follow right underneath it is the financial provision, the blessings in the natural for everything that you have need of to be able to accomplish and fulfill the will of God. He makes us rich to establish His covenant. That kind of wealth to the order for us to be able to live out what Father's purposed us to live in. But it's first riding upon the high places. It's first cooperating with God. Not just being in the meeting because somebody had a special anointing they laid hands on you and it came on you and you did it. No, it's you grabbing a hold of the Word of God and living the Word of God and ultimately that results in the blessings of God. Amen. It results in the miracles of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One of those things is getting happy all the time. If you realized how wealthy you would be from being happy and having a great attitude and blessing people and loving people, you'd get real happy right now. <laughs> oh, the, oh, the little Lord is making it really difficult. Okay, here, guys, I'm going to tell you the secret ultimately to being blessed. Be happy. Be happy. Oh. <laughs> oh, it's just too much to ask, God. 
because I just can't be happy. You don't know what I'm going through. But the Lord wants you to be able to now, instead of drawing on the circumstances and drawing on the oppression and drawing off a demon spirit, He wants you to start drawing off the Holy Ghost. He wants you to start drawing off heaven. Because you start drawing off the Holy Ghost, you start drawing off heaven. Elisa Baya, Halabasito, you know. Revival going to hit you, man. Ha, ha, ha. Joy, unspeakable, all full of glory going to overwhelm you. Hallelujah. I can see it. I already see you rolling on the floor, laughing your head off. Can't stop. I already see it. I saw it a long time ago. So it don't matter what I see in other, in other you know, expressions. I already know what's going to happen. It's just a matter of time. That's right. Amen. Amen. Just don't, don't, just stay in all the meeting. You know, I, I learned as, a, as a, a young boy, being around all of these men of God that we talk about. No, no, no. Some people need to be in eight weeks of meeting or they need to be in the 12 weeks of meeting. And on the, on the 12th week, that's when they're going to get hit if they're in every meeting and they come hungry for every meeting. People just want to have a quick fix with God. No, it's going to be your consecration to them. Amen. It's going to be willing to be tried and tested and then being willing as you're being tried and tested to be moldable, to mold, to respond to God, to recognize. He's saying, don't do it that way anymore. And then you finally discover, okay, Father, I'm not going to do it that way anymore. I'm going to do it your way from here on out. It's going to happen to you tonight because you're getting ready to be, you're getting ready, God's getting ready to give you an opportunity to sow into the kingdom, to put your treasure in heaven, to change everything about your life, the whole outlook of your life, to the change the way that you organize your checkbook, the way that you organize your priorities with the finances that, by the way, God gave you and that there's a sinister design to take away from you in less than 12 months. Yep. I'm telling you, in less than 12 months. Unless, an inter, unless a miraculous intervention takes place, there is a design that men of God are prophesying who have received insight about these things. I don't know them and I don't understand them. I'm just listening to what they have to say. I trust that they know God. They say that there is a design, a sinister design, that this time in 12 months without a miracle, you will not have money in the bank. That's, right. now that, that's pretty radical. Just consider whether it's true or not. Just consider the possibility. Then what are you going to do? And here's what I hear many men of God saying. Many men of God saying, the people that are in churches right now, they are, they are going to actually die. There's no way they're going to make it because the people have not been taught to live by faith. They do not know how to move in faith. They have lived for their self-interest. They've lived for what satisfies them. They live for what they can understand and what they can manage and what they can believe. Well, in the case like where your money's taken away, my goodness, people. You with me? Yes. yes. All that you can manage and all that you can believe is just shot. That means you're done. You don't learn how to move in faith when all hell's coming out against you. When you need to raise from somebody from the dead, you don't learn to move in faith when you need to raise somebody from the dead. You learn to move in faith when somebody just needed to get healed of a headache. Uh, you need to learn how to move in faith when, you, when all of a sudden bills were pressing on you and you looked at your finances Huh? And it's time, for the, it's time for offering. It's time to bless the Lord with your offering and with your tithes. And all you can think of is about all the finances, you know, uh, that uh, you need to spend on you. But we don't break it down that way. We don't think radically. We don't think plainly. We don't say, God, I cannot give this to you because I have a greater need than you do. Father, I cannot honor you with my tithes because the bills are set upon me and I know you're more concerned about me than me being uh, obedient to you. Now, if we would say that, we wouldn't do it that way, would we? Huh? That would be wrong, isn't it? No, I believe that most, for the most part, people that are sitting in here, they don't think that way, but there's people that are, that are listening to me right now that do think that way. And your checkbook is way behind. If you really started calculating the total amount of finances that the Lord has blessed you with and given you with and given you an opportunity to increase with through faith and honoring Him with your tithes and with your offerings and with your substance, if you did a calculation, you so in debt to God, you need to mortgage your house to get out of debt to God. Huh? Well, that's a different idea, ain't it? You need to sell all that you have just to get out of debt to God. So I said, oh, God, he don't care. He cares. He cares. He said, you robbed me. 
So I said, oh, that's Old Testament. Father ain't changed. He said, you robbed me. You held back from me the tithe. You held back from me the token of covenant relationship of my blessing upon you. That's what he says. Malachi. You robbed me. You took what was mine. You stole from me. Somebody said, I don't like a thief. Well, quit stealing from God. You can't go to heaven being a thief. Huh? You better keep your books right. I try, try to help people understand. If you find a dime on the sidewalk, one penny of it belongs to God. It's already his. It was already his. Huh? If $10 falls out of heaven, $1 belongs to God. It was already his. If you work with all your heart and you get a thousand bucks, God already owned a hundred bucks of it before it ever came to you. Hallelujah. If somebody gave you $10 million, one million of it belonged to God before it ever come across your table. That's it. It's the way it works. People got wrong math. Their math is built upon their own self-interest. <laughs> upon their own need. Make God's need your need. Make the thing, kingdom of God your purpose for living. Change it. I don't care what bad thing happened to you. You live in a prison or some bad thing? My goodness gracious. You got to try to call God a liar? He's not a liar. Isn't God, isn't Father worthy to be trusted? He's worthy. He's worthy to be trusted. I want to read this passage of scripture to you in 2 Chronicles. Oh, I was going to quote first, I was going to quote Psalms 1 3, wasn't I? Huh? And you know, when you, when you think about Psalms chapter 1, everybody would like verse 3. <laughs> Whatsoever you do shall prosper. But everybody doesn't like. The conditions. You must like them. Everybody that likes the conditions of prosperity, which is always, there's always going to be conditions to prosperity. Everybody that likes the condition of prosperity, turn to Psalms chapter 1 with me. You like the condition of prosperity. I like the condition of prosperity. I can go and read about prosperity. I know how prosperity works. Abraham said, send your angel that he may prosper. Angel, go, angel of the Lord, go with you that you may prosper in the way. Yes. Hey, huh? Eleazar, the angel going to go with you. What is that, chapter 24? Is it a Genesis? Or is it 22? 24? Angel's going to go with you that you may prosper. Well, I've got the angel of the Lord with me. Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Huh? Hallelujah. The ministering spirits. The angel of the Lord stood with Zechariah. I mean with jo Joshua. Son of Josedek and Zechariah. Angel of the Lord stands there. And he says, let the, the, those of you that are around him take off the filthy garments. The angels, the ministering angels that stood there with the angel of the Lord are the those. Because the singular is the angel of the Lord. The ministering angels took off the filthy garments. Oh, the sabayate. Well, I won't get into that tonight. I won't get it, but there's more with you than what you recognize. Oh, we Ezekiel, I mean, forgive me, Elijah was able to say, there's more with us than are with yeah. them. And what, what you need to understand that there's more with you than what you recognize. Mm -hmm. Christ Jesus, I mean, you tell you right now, when Christ Jesus goes somewhere, his train fills the temple. Huh? Hallelujah. Ah, the armies of heaven go with him wherever he's at. Urashay. Urashukai. I turned this morning, at, right towards the end of the meeting, I turned this morning, and the cloud of the Lord filled the whole platform. And I was like, reluctant to say sing. I was reluctant to say sing. I, thought, I saw that some, peer, some people were being restless. And I had to ask the Lord to forgive me, not to just, so I should have just waited, because the cloud of the Lord was on the platform. Just, it was thick. And the cloud of the Lord could just, if you just wait on the Lord, it's a manifestation where we can begin to see a growing, tangible, manifest power of God in the house. I love to see that the, the cloud of the Lord's not there right now. I know, but it doesn't mean that he ain't here because he's here. Just because I don't need to see manifestation. I'm still learning a whole lot about the things that I see. What do you see, son of man? Well, I see this and I see that. And, and, I, and, and the Lord can say, well, you see right. But then he's got to tell us what it is that we see. He's got to explain it. And as we begin to engage in this relationship and we're willing to have our eyes open to behold and to look and to see, 
so much of what God wants to say and minister to us. All we got to do is open our eyes and look and see and listen. Huh? And Father's always saying, what do you see? Well, I see this and I see that. And then we need to learn how to wait upon them, the Lord and hear him say, yeah, you see right. Now, let me tell you what it is that you saw. Let me tell you what that is, that, what that means. Let me show you how to move in this realm. Let me show you how this realm of faith works. But you're never going to be able to learn unless you engage, unless you get activated into this place of participating with God in these holy things. So I just quickly, Psalms chapter 1, blessed is the man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. That's what I'm not going to do. I'm not going to walk in the counsel of the ungodly. Somebody's ungodly trying to tell me what to do. I'm not listening to a thing he's got to say. I'm not going to listen to the ungodly advice and counsel that is modeled for us the way that everybody else does. I'm not going to do it that way. Blessed is a man that doesn't walk in the counsel of the ungodly. Blessed is a man that does not stand in the way of sinners. Nor sit in the seat of the scornful. And I believe that sitting in the seat of the scornful is one of the worst things that people continually do. It's the finger pointing. It's the sticking out of the lip. It's the same primary, it's the same primary issues that Isaiah deals with in Isaiah chapter 58. That's keeping people from walking in the glory of God. And the benefits and the provision of God. So got them stuck, constantly complaining, constantly murmuring, feeling bad about themselves, feeling like a failure. I don't, I'm, not, I'm not a You need to stop feeling like a failure. You're a success. You need to start feeling, feeling special. You need to say, you've been beautified with the salvation. You've been given his glory. You've been made a co-inheritor with Christ Jesus. You've been made the heir of God. You have made a son of God. I mean, my goodness gracious. What does Father need to do? He's put a crown of gold upon your head. I mean, he, you know, he's given you the robes of righteousness. He's seated you in heavenly places. He's given you all power in the Holy Ghost. He's baptized you in the fire of his glory. And you feel like a failure. <laughs> that is the height of self-interest. And self-consumption and living under a lie and an affliction that's going to keep you from ever taking the first steps of walking in divine power. You're going to have to rise up and yes. cut that giant's head off. You need to get stirred up with the same anointing that was in David's heart said, Who's this uncircumcised Philistine lying against the property of God? <laughs> Amen. Amen. Come on now. Come on now. Come on now. Come on, I've been, come on now. Come on now. Come on. Oh, it's Isaiah 42, verse 4. You shall four. not fail nor be discouraged. You should not fail nor be discouraged. Yes. Amen. I mean, if you're going to prosper in the way, you're going to have to meditate upon these things which God has said. Amen. Day and night. Otherwise, you're not going to prosper. So you have to make up your mind. What's ripping you off is yourself, yeah. not the devil. It's true. Yeah. You have to, you're going to have to say, forget about the counsel of the ungodly. No more standing in the way of sinners. Huh? No more sitting in the seat of the scornful. No more talking bad about anybody in any way. If it's doing anything less than building them up as a person and holding them in the highest respect and regard as a saint in God who can lay any charge to God's elect and yet people constantly bring forth accusations against men like me who are walking in authority and anointing in Christ's stead. Stupid. That's stupid. That's ignorance. Huh? Satan doesn't even bring a regular accusation against God's authorities. God doesn't want you knowing anybody after the flesh anymore. He wants you to know everybody after the spirit. Hallelujah. Huh? It's time to get some spiritual discernment so you can see the glory, the, the anointings that God has placed upon people around you and you can have a reverence and respect and not violate things in the spirit and heap damnation on your head. Listen to me. People doing things all the time that's violation to the Spirit, violation of the Holy Ghost, and then they're not repenting because they have no discernment, because they haven't give, give paid any attention to the Word of the Lord. Ever learning, but never coming to the knowledge of the truth. Are you listening to me? That's why I had you vow what you vowed this morning before the Lord. Okay? Hallelujah. But if he delights rather in the Word of the Lord, 
and in his word he meditates the laws of the Lord he meditates day and night come on now that's the same thing that the Lord said to Joshua about the time he was about to step into the inheritance that's what he said is it what he said Joshua chapter 1 and verse 8 and verse 10 that's what he said I'm not going to go into that tonight but I'm really laying hold for your spiritual prosperity tonight I'm laying hold for soul prosperity I'm laying hold for you to begin to ride upon your high places so that something can follow it, the good heritages of God. I'm looking forward to you, Craig, taking a hold of this wonderful blessing in God that has been made available to you in Christ Jesus and fully benefit from it because we're going to do it. We're going to do it. We're going to do it. Yes. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Man, I feel the anointing. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. He'll bring forth his fruit. He's not going to know any drought. Once again, he, he, the lee, his leaves shall wither, and whatever he does, he prosper. That's the way it's happening with me. Everything I'm doing is prospering. How's it happening with you? There's always increase. There's increase. I exist in it. I, we left a property of $3 million. Now we're on a property of $14 million. Somebody said you hadn't paid for it yet. You don't see properly. You live in a realm of doubt. You live in a realm of human existence. You live in a realm of imagination and rational logic and sense. Huh? A sensual realm. Huh? You need to live in a realm of faith. You need to see what God's doing. That's a realm of faith. Seeing what God's doing. Not having coincidence and happenstance and still haven't got it done yet. Man, I'm doing it. What are you talking about? I exist in this realm. Come, I ask you to join me. Come exist in this realm. You'll find yourself going from glory to glory. You'll find yourself always increasing. You'll find yourself, God set me in a large, large place. Amen. Hallelujah. He set me in a large, large place. He gave me lots and lots of room. Mm -mm -mm. I'm already seeing this place too small. Somebody said, what are you talking about? You don't understand. I'm being moved by an unseen realm. I feel things and experience things in a relationship with my Father that has nothing to do with what you see and what you understand. The Word of God gives you an indication. It's the Word of God that causes us to show, to, to describe to us how it works. See, Paul didn't have a Bible to walk around with because he was writing the Bible. And what God gave him to do was the ability to transfer to us the information so we could understand what he had stepped into and how all this glory works that was operating in his life. And all we got to do is obey and participate and do what he did and we'll get the same results. Come on now. Come on now. Don't be too shocked about it. Don't be too overwhelmed. Wow, I do this. It's like I'm talking to you guys about how to make a trillion dollars next week. You just grab a hold of it, Jesus did. You grab a hold of it, Jesus. You have all riches. He's supplying all that you have need of according to his riches and glory. Wow. All I have need of, huh? I exist in the realm. Huh? Someday, when you mature and you grow older in God, then at that time, the Lord will supply to you all that you have need of. According to his riches and glory. No, he shall supply all that you have need of according to his riches and glory. I exist in that realm. But there was a condition. Because he said that to the people at Philippi. Those folks at Macedonia who made, in, made themselves poor by giving to God. They went beyond what was reasonable. Went beyond just tithing and offerings. And with abandonment made themselves poor in taking care of the purposes of God. Now God shall supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I exist in that realm because I participate with that realm. Yes, you do. Amen. Yes, you do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now I just want to read that one more. One more I see. Verse of Christmas. Testing. Two can eat supply, two can eat supply. 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 Two can e
I want a maquiara. I want a maquiara. Is she cutting as a rania? See, the Diana Kitibana and Masaya, Mayor Tayano. Era Sigariano. A Sigariano. Tell him a name. Tessa Coramaya. Tessa Coramaya. Eresi. Esari. Tornea. Tornea by Adi. Sigaramaya. Eka. Tila Bakiala Niala. Shiganayani? Ay? Shikaramayana? Shikaramaya? Cherubiana? Hallelujah. Praise God. Come on now. And I? And Tilo? My name is Taros Mai. Tiro, Tiro Soto di Niata Kim. Hallelujah. <laughs> 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 So, Mikari. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Listen to me. Listen. Listen to me. Listen. Listen to me. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> 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 
Listen to this. Listen. Sue. Sue. <laughs> Listen. Oh. Ha 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 Listen. Sue. 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 Sa. Ha 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 Listen. Mania tua, mania tua, mania tua. Orupa, us, ayesu, u, usian ma ex, ungaes, ungaenis, mandolopu, iris, urisai, ukenaya, ha, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So, hallelujah. Suramai, sukiena. This. <laughs> Listen, Sutona Mai too. Good. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Almighty God. Thank you, Almighty God. Thank you, Living God. Thank you, Father, for your anointing. Thank you, Father, for your glory. Malabosayam, Mombrikaya, Arasataya Ravakishi. Mo Moloto yini asaya ho mana mana ne u mm shake mo oh yes yes okay this thank you Jesus We thank you for your glory. We thank you for your anointing. The prince, 
of every yoke that removes of every shackle. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you for taking control of our lives. Mandolo Suki and Anahade Mandolo Suti and Anamahande. Now, this is what the Lord says The Lord says this If you will do these things instead of just hear them, if you will do them, if you will see the Lord pointing and saying, This is the way I want you to walk. This is the place that I've called you and chosen you to live in. If you will do these things, the Lord says, then you will find yourself literally filled with all the provision that is necessary to fulfill the will and purposes of God for your life. And so the Lord says this. He says, believe in the Lord your God, so shall you be established. Believe his prophets, and so shall you prosper. You're never going to move forward so long as it's always something that you hear and you find yourself, you'll delight in the hearing, you'll say, my, I felt the anointing, I knew it was God talking to me. But I never understood how to practically, how in a practical way to implement these things in my life. I'm telling you tonight that you're not going to be able to walk out of this place, leaving here without a divine impartation and divine ability to be able to implement. Oh, I'm telling you, even in a natural world, in the world of men, all of these ideas that a lot of folks have, that, are very, that may even be classified as geniuses, but they don't know how to execute. It keeps them back even from the natural prosperity and blessing that if they only knew and the ability and the wisdom to execute on, all, what all they would be able to accomplish. And Father wants you and I to know that we are called by Him to have our faith in His power. Hallelujah. That He is resourcing us and giving us the ability, we have to be willing to step out. Truly, it is his voice calling you to come and walk out upon the water of the supernatural. Truly, it is his voice calling you to come and rejoice and have fellowship with him. 
It does not matter what kinds of things have happened in your life. It does not matter what kind of failures. It doesn't matter what kind of, of situations. It doesn't matter what kind of sin or shame. Father invites everybody to come rejoice in his glorious and holy and wonderful name. He's always setting us up. Setting us up. Setting us up. To step in a whole new dimension. A whole new realm of divine interaction. Too many times we'll find ourselves just constantly stuck remembering what we did yesterday. Trying to get over uh, the things that happened to us in the past. Or, or being even maybe content and blessed with the place that we found ourselves in through the goodness of God. But Father's asking us to reach beyond that which we understood and reach beyond that which we have known and just be willing to obey these words that speak of things that are absolutely impossible in the realms of men, but which is everyday occurrences common in this place that we now have as a habitation, a realm in which we have entered into an inheritance. It's far more than a land of milk and honey, says the Lord. This is the realm of the heavenly glory yes. of all that Jesus himself displayed, of all that the only begotten Son re revealed. He has given to us an unmeasurable and unlimited grace, an unlimited resource by the power of the Holy Ghost to have all these things that he has said. But you have to be willing to step out beyond those limitations that you have defined for yourself, those things that you've confined yourself to living in because of doubt, because of fear, because of unbelief, because you're reserving things for yourself rather with, than with abandonment, serving God. And this day is going to be different for you. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I pray in Jesus' name. That every one of you step into a walk with the Lord. You live in a place with Jesus. That you lose the English language on a daily basis. That you find yourself being so caught away in the glory. You just can't find out how to talk in English. Amen. We'll strengthen and build you up in faith. And in this realm of faith. Through the, through the acknowledgement of what God has said. Through no longer doing speaking your own words. No longer doing your own pleasure. But giving yourself to doing the pleasure of the Father, the will of the Father, and speaking His words. Oh, I'm telling you, what you're going to discover is that all this time, you've had an unspeakable gift. You've had an unlimited provision from heaven. In every dimension of those things that God has promised and spoken of in His word. That seem too far away, seem too aloof, seem too impossible to have. Seem always beyond you, seem always out of reach. No, they've always been present. No. They've always been yours. You've allowed the enemy to lie to you in circumstances. You've allowed fear and intimidation to hold you back. But I pray in Jesus' name this day will be different. It will begin a, begin a day of, of soul prosperity. Soul prosperity that is all found in this realm that we read to you in Isaiah 58 tonight. That we spoke of many different ways in, in, in specifics this morning in a different way. But I pray in Jesus' name, you'll let the word of God now take place in your life. You'll meditate on it. You'll speak it. The word of God will be in your heart and be in your mouth. You will be confess it. You'll declare it. You'll receive it. You'll just begin this day to exist in these things. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. He's my rock. He's my fortress. He's my deliverer. In him shall I trust. Well, praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Tonight, I want you to just go ahead, get an offering ready, something that the Lord stirs your heart about. I know that tonight that many of you may indeed give out of your very living. But I want you to be convinced that as much as Jesus paid attention to the woman with her two mites who did not give as it was convenient to her out of her 
abundance, but she gave out of the realms of necessity. So the Lord will take special interest in your giving tonight. And we can be certain you when the Lord takes interest in the way that we give, he's definitely going to fulfill all the promises that he has associated with the giving. Oh, a heart really is in it. A heart is really in it when it costs it. A heart is really in it when we feel it. And I pray tonight that you begin to allow the Lord Jesus Christ, begin to allow the Holy Spirit to move you out into a faith realm beyond the boundaries and beyond the limitations. God will provide for you supernaturally. Fear, intimidation will hold you back. Now I want you to understand, you give according to the faith that you know how to operate in relationship wise. And you let God through that faithfulness of allowing him just to take you to that next place and take you to the next limit as it were in your life. You watch faith increase as you increase with the increase of God in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. So everybody just stand with me here and uh, I want you to come bless the Lord. Hallelujah. With your giving. Hallelujah. Sirusana Ipeo. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. You're my rock. You're my fortress. You're my deliverer. In you will I trust. I praise the name of Jesus. I praise the name of Jesus. I praise the name of Jesus. Lord, you're my rock. You're my fortress. You're my deliverer. In you will I trust. I praise the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you for that special anointing of your grace that causes us to prosper and be in health as our soul prospers. And I thank you, Father, for the revelation and the understanding, the ability to see and to know how to participate with you in obedience to you to have soul prosperity. How to obey your ways. How to give ourselves to trusting you and walking in your faith and cooperating, oh God, with your attitude and disposition towards all men. Father, we give ourselves to such a love. Oh Lord, we give ourselves to such a unity. Oh God, we give ourselves to such a purpose. Of shining as light through the world, men seeing our good deeds and the way that we treat one another, the way we behave towards all men, and especially towards you. And as a result, the humanity being impacted with that light and that glory and that disposition and glorifying you, Father. Oh, Father, we want to see something far greater than what the Queen of Sheba saw when she beheld the glory that she set upon Solomon. For truly a greater glory is here today. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus that every single soul in this place, every single person in this place will step into the move of it, the revival of it, the glory of it, the disposition of faith and divine power that you have made provision for us to walk in. That each one will demand it of their life. Each one will command those things which you have, which you have willed. I want you to say with me, I will, I will. Command, command that which Father has willed. Father has Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say it's a new day. Amen. Amen. It is a new day. A new day. This, this place is all about those things 
that belong to the expressions of the Holy Ghost. I want you to make a commitment to, when you leave here tonight that you will not allow in your members, in your thinking, in your thoughts, in your life, any expression in this building that is not the demonstration of the Holy Spirit. If you should give yourself to only allowing that which God the Holy Ghost would produce through you, I'm telling you, it will change from just a good attitude and a pleasant disposition to the manifestation of signs, wonders, and miracles through your life. There is a practical application of those things that you participate with God in right now, right where you're at, according to the measure of faith that you have, according to the grace of God that's been given you. You do these things and watch. We will have an, an explosive move of God, signs and wonders and miracles being manifested and demonstrated through every single person in the body of Christ, not just a few. God's grazing up a great army. Yes. Amen. Amen. Well, I want you to hug each other, love each other, bless each other. And if anybody wants prayer for anything, if you're sick in your body, if you're diseased in your body, if you're tormented in your mind, whatever you have need of, you present it to the Lord. We'll pray for you. The Lord will touch you. I'm certain of it. And, and please, you know, don't speak your own words on his Sabbath. Don't speak your own words. And I hope you don't get real silent. I hope you're filled with the words of heaven. I mean, it was maybe that was a good thing to be silent. Ha. Huh. I know some people, some ministers took Isaiah chapter 58 and said, Oh, yeah, it's where all God's people need to take a vow of silence. Probably. <laughs> Until they learn how to speak the word of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Father. I'm so glad to see... Those people that were given assignments to always come up front for prayer and ministry. I'm so glad to see them coming. Because it won't take long and the breakthrough will come. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for the anointing. Thank you, Lord, for your signs and your wonders and your miracles. Hallelujah. O Sarene Ekesi. Hosepene. D. Daniel. Why don't you just come, son? Why don't you start down there? Hallelujah. Praise God. O Sarene. Mongalea. Seringa. Mongesi. Melea to Cusin. Come, somebody come play some music. Isi Caronosi. Iarronosuri. Just want you to just worship. I want you to worship. Worshippers are supposed to know when they're supposed to come and worship, eh? Hallelujah. Giving yourself to the gift of God and the ministry of the Spirit. No matter what. Just receive right now. Just receive right now. Just receive right now. Just receive right now. Just receive. Just receive. You don't necessarily have to fall down to receive, I guarantee you. But if you do fall down, that's fine. Many people, when they encountered God, is, is they, they went into a deep sleep. You read about them. They go into a deep sleep. The angel of the Lord has to come and wake them up as, as it were out of a deep sleep. Thank you, Jesus. Power of God runs right through you. Power of God runs right through you. Anointing of the Holy Ghost. Anointing of the Holy Ghost. Anointing of the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for the anointing. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for the anointing. Honey, come on, Borotaya. Kurasari Ninkipi. Yeah. Surisana Nayati. Suribanaina. Subananaina. Subananaya. 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 Right now I command that leg to be healed right now in Jesus' name. I command that bone to repair now in Jesus' name. I command that pain to go out of it now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Right now in the name of Jesus. 
I command for a quick recovery now in Jesus' name. No more. No more prolonged. Just lift your hands towards heaven. Just lift your hands towards heaven. Receive. Just lift your hands towards heaven. Just receive. Just 